on his right elbow. Cole underwent an MRI on the elbow earlier this week after reporting discomfort. He is expected to start the season on the injured list. So what does New York do in his absence? ESPN MLB insider Buster Olney. If they go the free agent route, Blake Snell is still out there. Jordan Montgomery is still out there. If they wanted to go the trade route, Dylan Cease is still out there. But the cost is incredibly prohibitive from their perspective, in part because any player they add, they will be taxed at a rate of 110%. The Chargers release receiver Mike Williams saved $20 million against the cap, and the move did make the team cap compliant for the start of the new league year today. Linebacker Khalil Mack agreed to restructure his contract, so he'll stay with L.A. next season, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter. Jets landing a new offensive lineman for the second straight day, acquiring right tackle Morgan Moses from the Ravens as part of a sw uh, pick swap. Jets trying to reinforce the protection for quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ Chris Candy coming up Thursday with free agency in full effect. I'll tell you which teams have improved themselves the most this offseason. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And welcome into a Wednesday edition of After Further Review. Musso once again in for Moscone. We're presented by Pluckers Wing Bar, Alondra, and Paul O'Neill. Along for the ride, we have a lot to do here on this Wednesday. It is officially a new league year in the NFL as of uh, two minutes ago Eastern time. Of course, 3 o'clock our time. So that means the Saints needed to get under the salary cap. They have done that with about $15 million in room available now. The haters and doubters, of whom there are many, are furious that the Saints have once again beat the salary cap. In all seriousness, you can... Uh, critique the approach, and I think all of us have done that plenty over the last uh, few months for sure, but they still believe in it. They're going to go that route, and it was something that they needed to do, and in reality, there was never a doubt that they were actually going to do it, and they did. So the big move that really put them there today was Ryan Ramchick. We'll talk plenty about that. Of course, as we were going off the air yesterday, they signed Willie Gay, so we'll talk about that. LSU and North Dakota State are going to do battle at the box in less than an hour now. We have a lineup. We'll get to that in a in about half an hour or so, give you some thoughts on game number one of that series. Christian Clark is going to be here to preview Pell's Cavs at the top of the second hour. Sean Fazan in, uh, in hour three to talk uh, everything else that has happened with the New Orleans Saints. And that is where we will start as well. So, as I mentioned, uh, they are kind of right off the open. At, right as we were going off air yesterday, I mean, we were coming into Otterlocks. And the alert comes through that Willie Gay was signing with the Saints. And that was after we had spent the majority of yesterday's show talking about everybody that had left the Saints and how they hadn't brought anybody in yet. But when you look at their strategy, they normally get that one signing in early, let the market settle, and then, you know, look to make more moves later in uh, in the free agent cycle. So Willie Gay is that guy this time around. Um, on the surface, like it an awful lot for a couple of different reasons. Number one He's 26 years old. That, I mean, that's that's one reason. If, if we're going to constantly sit here and talk about the Saints needing to get younger, I mean, I look at it and I say, I understand, yes, it's a one-year deal worth up to $5 million, so it might not be a, a long-term solution for you there, at least not right now. Let's get him in there and, and see how it goes in Dennis Allen's defense. But it immediately does make you younger because Willie Gay is going to contribute to this team. Will it be in a starting role? I don't know. Is he the replacement for Zach Bond? Maybe they look at him like that, but... He's played kind of all over the place for Kansas City. So he's versatile. He's played in the box. He's played off the edge. They used him a lot of different ways and got a lot of different uh, production out of him. So from that aspect, I like. It adds speed to you. He can run sideline to sideline very, very well. He has shown the ability at times to be on the field uh, as a three-down linebacker in his time in Kansas City. Though, I mean, when you look at the production, like from a number standpoint, Maybe it doesn't blow you away, but it's all really solid. I mean, 233 total tackles in uh, in four seasons. 
the longevity as of recently has been really good. The durability as of recently has been pretty good. We're going to get to that uh, a little bit more momentarily. But and when you look at 57 career games in an organization like Kansas City, I love that. He's got former teammates that he will join in New Orleans. Obviously, Tyron Matthew, but you also got Colin Sander, Saunders from, uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs. So there's immediately some camaraderie there. There's a lot of reasons to like the signing for Willie Gay. I mentioned some of the durability, right? And that is something you, you have to throw out there with him because early in his career, injuries were a bit of a problem. As of lately, it hasn't been that bad, but his rookie season in week 17, he uh, suffers a high ankle sprain, misses uh, some time there, tears his meniscus during practice uh, for the, the first Super Bowl that the Chiefs were going to. So he obviously misses that. Suffered a concussion in training camp, didn't miss any time. Had turf toe leading into the 2021 season and starts that year on IR. And then just this past season, suffers a neck injury in um in the divisional round against the Buffalo Bills, misses the AFC Championship game, but was back for the Super Bowl. So, I mean, look, when you look at, at, his, at, the, at the breakdown, uh, 2020, Played in all 16 games. That's great. You know, he, he suffers, like we said, the, the injury in, in week 18, in, excuse me, in week 17. Um, starts 2021 on IR, so only 12 games there with 11 starts. He was suspended uh, during the 2022 season for, um, let's see, what, how, how, do they, how do they officially word it? Violating the league's personal conduct policy. It was after an arrest and a misdemeanor criminal property damage charge. Uh, so he misses four games there, but that that's not, Injury related, but that's where you see, um, you know, the disparity there. Where he only plays thirteen games. If he doesn't have that suspension, he he's playing and starting probably all seventeen games. And then this past year in the regular season, sixteen out of seventeen games played, fifteen starts. So that's been great. But you you have to throw that out there because of those what was it five injuries that we went through there so far in, in four seasons, four of them caused him to miss game time. So. Yes, that's a bit of a concern, but if he's healthy and he can stay on the field for New Orleans, and, and again, whatever capacity, that's going to be something very interesting for me to see is what kind of role they use him for. Because you obviously needed to build the depth back up at that position, especially after Zach Bond heads off in free agency, and maybe Willie Gay does slide just kind of right into that spot. We'll talk to Sean Fazan about this uh, you know, in, in the third hour and, and see what he thinks is the best, the best go of it. But the thing is, he's been a productive linebacker. He makes you younger. It's a position of need for the New Orleans Saints, and it's team-friendly right now with maybe the potential, if it does work out to be successful, you can look for something a little bit longer down the road with him and continue to make your defense specifically, but your team as a whole younger. So those are the things that I obviously like a lot about it. It's also funny because anytime I think of Willie Gay, the first thing that pops into my mind is the uh, his recruitment and LSU and Willie Gay is on the way and, and all that kind of stuff. And then he goes to Mississippi State and he was at Ole Miss committed to Ole Miss at one point. I, it was a wild recruitment. So that's always the first thing I think about uh, with Willie Gay. But love the signing uh, of him for the New Orleans Saints and excited to see how he fits into Dennis Allen's defense. The other part of it today for New Orleans was Ryan Ramchick. And this is something I'm going to be really interested to talk uh, to Sean Vazand about later in the show because we've all become so familiar with the New Orleans Saints and their... Uh, their um, you know, strategy, I guess, in managing the salary cap, how they go about it with the voidable years on the back and converting this into a sign, you know, roster bonus, signing bonus, all that type of stuff. This one was a little bit different, uh, with Ramcheck, and it, it makes sense. And again, we can get a little bit more in depth to that a little bit later on in the show because we're due for a break here momentarily. But it, it makes a little more sense when you look at where Ramchick is right now, given the the problems with the knee. And that's why his contract restructure, whatever you want to call it, was always going to be one of the more interesting ones this offseason for the Saints. Because, look, he missed uh, a lot of time at the end of the season in 2023. You go into the offseason wondering about the surgery, what kind of procedure he's going to have to have on the knee. The cartilage is just kind of deteriorating there. They've given him like clean bill of health. They feel great about where he's at and he's going to be good to go. It seems for 2024, but the cartilage in the knees, you know, 
I'm not a doctor, never going to claim to be one either, but it would stand to reason. I mean, that's going to keep deteriorating. So how much longer, you know, does he have? It's one reason when we've talked about what the Saints might do in the draft uh, this offseason, offensive tackle continues to come up because you need help at left tackle and how much longer does Ryan Ramchick have? But the way they restructured that deal, it say, I mean, it gets him the guaranteed money, obviously, and it saved $14 million against the cap. So it was one of their... Uh, one of their finer works uh, works in, in capology so far over there, uh, down there, down there, I should say, on airline drive. So uh, Ryan Ramchick back in the boat, clean bill of health. They're ready to roll with him. And if he's ready to go and he can play at a high level, we've seen what that looks like with Ryan Ramchick. And that's a great sign for your offensive line. I think it just is fair to ask the question, how much longer does he have on that knee? even with the procedures that he's undergone here in this offseason. Um, a couple things to pass along Saints-wise that I see right in front of me on Twitter here as we get out of the first segment. Uh, Luke Johnson, per source, Saints would designate Michael Thomas a post-June 1 cut. That is not surprising. We knew that was coming all the way back from when Jeff Duncan last week uh, had that report, and it sparked the Michael Thomas uh Twitter tantrum, do we want to call it that? I'm not really quite sure uh, what to term that. Uh, and then Nick Underhill, the Saints have re-signed fullback Adam Prentice. So uh, just a couple more notes to pass along in the league year, 2020, uh, 2024 league year, now just underway uh, in the NFL. So news will continue to roll in and continue to roll in. That's why we'll have Sean, Sean Fazan with us here uh, at 515 uh, later today to uh, kind of go through all of it as uh, – as the Saints get set now, we can officially call it the 2024 season. It is here. All right, we're going to grab a break. We're going to come back on the other side. Musso in from Ascona today. We're presented by Pluckers here on this Wednesday on AFR. When we get back, we will recap game number one, LSU and North Dakota State. Tigers 6-1 to one, uh, winners last night at the box. Pretty complete com performance. I do have uh, a lot of thoughts on that. We'll let you hear from Jay Johnson what he had to say after the game as well. Wednesday's AFR presented by Pluckers continues next. Stay here. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. That's right. Darren James has launched a new group with a new group, LPT Realty, which will give so many expanded resources to you, the homeowner, as you're selling your home. Darren James will have in increased access to communication and so many other resources to help sell your home for the highest dollar possible. So you're you're ma uh, matching and marrying here. The number one realtor in the state of Louisiana. Wall Street Journal's is the top 1% of realtors in America and a new company that's growing at an exponential rate that's going to give you expanded resources. I want to also mention, if you are a realtor or are thinking about getting your realtor's license, you need to call Darren James and learn about LPT Realty. Their structure and how they're allowing the realtor to keep more commissions is something that could change your life. Darren James. Think real estate. Think Darren James. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23 1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. 
It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Quick reminder about Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com. Lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. They're the best. If you are, gentlemen, thinking about popping the question and you're thinking about where am I going to go buy that diamond, I want you to consider this. There are places that will sell you man-made lab diamonds, but what what are you buying? It, I mean, it's according to its makeup and characteristic, sure, diamond. But is it going to hold its value? Like, is that the way you want to say I love you? I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Go to Lee Michaels. Go to Lee Michaels. Walk in the door. Experience the thing I talk about all the time, which is the Lee Michaels experience. It's Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry with 10 locations. Baton Rouge, two locations in Baton Rouge. New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport, Mississippi, Texas as well. 10 locations across three states. It's Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Thrill her, gentlemen. Thrill her with a gift in the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. All right, welcome back in. Musso in for Moscona. Talk some LSU baseball here. Tigers get a win 6-1 to one over North Dakota State last night. Moved to 15-2. and two. Got plenty of thoughts uh, that I want to go through uh, with that game. Uh, I know there is a lineup out for game number two, which is set to get underway here at, at 4 p.m. Uh, I'm going to go through the lineup a little bit in the next segment. I want to focus solely on last night's game uh, here in uh, in this segment. So, like I said, LSU, 6-1 to winners last night. Thought it was a pretty complete performance from top to bottom. I mean, the pitching was was dominant once again. And Kate Anderson gives up uh, the run in the first inning. You have the infield single and then a double down the line. Uh, or I should just say a double to right field. Or double. I don't remember what field it was hit to. And it, and it scores the run. Aggressive play by North Dakota State there to send the runner home. Uh, and and it, it pays off. After that, LSU shuts him out the rest of the way. So... That's really good. Was Cade Anderson his sharpest? No, but he was still really good, and that wasn't really what we were watching for last night with him anyway, right? What we were watching for with Cade Anderson last night is how long are they going to let him go? Because throughout you know his rise in the early part of the season, the story has been like, okay, how and when do you get him on the weekend? Because you don't really just want to have him you know go out there and be a bona fide midweek starter. He's too good for that. So... The conversation has really shifted to, all right, he's going to start in the bullpen most likely on the weekend, and that definitely seems to be the plan with him getting the start on uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, 38 pitches, two and two-thirds, that's perfect. Like, in that range of pitch count, you can probably see him Saturday out of the bullpen, definitely on Sunday. Uh, Jay Johnson was asked last night post game about this, about pitching Kate Anderson uh about about pitching Kate Anderson only the three uh, excuse me only the two and two third or into the third inning only the thirty eight pitches 
And, you know, if that means potentially, or I should say what it means for his role potentially um, on the weekend and will we see him? What do you think? I'm not being, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just like, yeah, you know, he's one of our best pitchers, so why not have one of your best pitchers available? And if we don't use him, then we'll roll him to next Tuesday, you know, but uh, yeah, I thought he was solid. I don't think he was as sharp as he was last week, Um, but there's one run on the board and almost three innings done, and I'll take that, you know, for an entire career out of a pitcher. So there's your answer, Um, but also saying he wasn't as sharp as last week is kind of not fair. <laughs> That's, I mean, how are you supposed to be as sharp as he was last week when he strikes out 13 of 15 outs that he records in the first seven of the ball game? It's pretty hard to match that. Uh, so I don't think anyone expected him to be as sharp, but uh, a great outing there. So he got you up to the great start, and you'll see him on the weekend, and that's fantastic. I cannot wait. We'll have plenty of time this week to talk more about that, but I cannot wait to watch him make his SEC debut because this stuff has just been really, really special, and especially now that, I mean, that breaking ball, he's starting to really get a feel for it, and it's a, it is a great uh, left-handed curveball that that Kate Anderson has. Uh, for LSU, when they got things started offensively, uh, picked up in the second inning, uh, loved the manufacturing of runs there. Hayden Travinsky leads you off with the double. Neal is hit by a pitch right after that, would just, which just started an incredible night uh, for Brady Neal. So you have first and second and nobody out. That's a spot that you saw plenty of times over the weekend against Xavier, and they didn't come through as well as you would like them to there in any way, base hit or manufacturing the runs. So I really enjoyed seeing them manufacture the runs there in the second inning. After a fly out by Bingham, Malazzo singles to right field, just kind of dumped the one right over the first baseman's head. So Travinsky had to hold up to see if it was going to be caught first. You have the bases loaded, one out. Great chance to blow it open or squeeze one across and tie the game because at that point you're down one to nothing. And Braswell does just that, hits the sacrifice fly, scores Travinsky, ties the game, and then LSU executes a double steal to perfection with Malazzo and Neal. Neal scores Oh, wow, while Malazzo gets hung up there in between second and first, and LSU takes the lead after two. When you're struggling offensively, and I say that, you know, struggling offensively, air quotes kind of in a sense, because it's just, I think it's been more of a consistency issue than actual struggles. Sometimes manufacturing runs is the best cure. You don't need to just go out there and score, you know, 15 scoring six and doing it in a way where you squeeze them across, where you you show yourself that you can do it in so many different ways is great. That can get your confidence. Runs are what's important. Run column. That's the only column that matters at the end of the game. I would love LSU to go out there and have 15 hits every single night. The run column decides the game. I don't really care how you get them. Texas A&M walked off Sam Houston State last night to stay undefeated with a walk. Do you think Texas A&M cares that it was a walk-off walk and it wasn't a you know a walk-off homer or a base hit. No, they won. That's all that matters. So uh, same same premise here uh, with LSU. Get the runs, get them however you can. I, I don't care. So that was great to see. I, I liked that um, an awful lot. We got to see Fidel Uyoa. He wasn't as sharp as we've seen him either, but he battled really, really hard. I think when you look uh, in the fourth inning especially, he – Ends up loading the bases on free passes. And at that point, I said to, like I said out loud watching the game, I was like, okay, I want to see Fidel Oyoa get out of this by himself. Like he got himself into this. I want to see him get out of it. And he wouldn't get that chance. And I ended up being okay with it because Jay Witten got Justin Lure. And if you've been listening to Moose with the Box, you know we've kind of had Justin Lure under a microscope as of late because the consistency just hasn't been there for him. And this was a really big spot to bring him in. Bases loaded. Two outs, it's a two-run game. It's three to one at that point. Like, LSU hadn't separated. So a base hit ties the game. This is a huge spot for him in a lefty-lefty matchup. And he went in there and got the job done. Uh, ends up in a full count, but, I mean, is is ahead early. Credit the hitter, uh, Schaefner. He battled, fouled off some pitches, really worked the count. But Justin Lure executed a perfect slider down and away from the lefty to get the strikeout in a, I mean, you don't get more of a hitter's count then three, two, bases loaded, two out. Like, you expect you're going to probably get something there. They throw the slider. So great execution by Nate Yeski on the pitch call. Great execution by Justin Lure to make the pitch. And then from there on, he went on to have a really, really nice outing. You look up, and it's two and a third, 
for Lure, shut out and three strikeouts uh, on the night. Now, he worked a lot of deep counts in the game, at least four three-ball counts that I can remember. But what was important is those guys didn't reach. He made the pitch when he had to and got the outs. I mean, four three-ball counts at least. And you look up and there's a zero in the walk column. That's successful. So can he build the consistency off of that now? Because y'all, look, Justin Lohr is plenty talented enough. They brought him here to be a vital, reliable piece, not just in the bullpen, at the back end of the bullpen, or someone they can bring in in that type of spot when the game's in the balance. And that was their magic moment uh, last night when the game is in the balance to come in and slam the door. And you've seen flashes of it, but the consistency just has not been there, if we're being completely honest. You see the the potential, the talent, everything. It just has to manifest itself a little bit more. So I'll be fired up to watch him this weekend as well, the next time that they put him out there. Javen Coleman was phenomenal uh, to close out the ball game. He was up to 95 uh, a couple different times. That was his peak. Sat 91, 93 very consistently. The breaking ball had a great feel for that. You look up, there's five strikeouts there. He he was awesome. He slammed the door. So uh, that was great to see because you hadn't seen Coleman pitch in about nine or 10 days. I mean, the last time he had pitched before Tuesday night against uh, North Dakota State was that Sunday game against Texas State in Houston. So it was uh, it was a pretty long layoff there for uh, for Coleman. And then what I loved also offensively after after the two run second was just the constant pressure that LSU was able to kind of keep up the rest of the night. A single run in the third, a single run in the fourth, a single run in the fifth, and a single run in the seventh. You're scoring throughout the game. That's that's fantastic. It was highlighted by Brady Neal. I mean, Brady Neal was was great last night. Three for three. Uh, he drove in two runs. I mean, I believe it. Yeah, it was the, in the fifth inning uh, with two outs and uh, and two on singles through the uh, through the right side of the infield. Uh, really a line drive that dropped right in front of the right fielder. And, and that gets uh, Tommy White home. Good, good approach at the plate. Uh, gets himself into a hitter's count and delivers with two outs. Something you've seen this LSU team do uh, do plenty. And then um, the, other, the other big uh, swing from Neal was in the seventh inning. Uh, again with two outs. Doubles to uh, right center field. Scores Tommy White yet again. And then ultimately... Um, Ultimately, Trevinsky was caught off a of third base. It, he had gotten back, but he slid off the bag. And and uh, credit credit to uh, the North Dakota State third baseman. He kept the tag on it, and that ended the inning. So Brady Neal was awesome, and he's somebody that you absolutely have to have in the lineup. And where you saw him in the lineup yesterday was uh, different in right field. Jay Johnson was asked about that last night as well. This is what he said uh, for his reasoning for putting Brady Neal in right. This is number two, uh, Alondra, and I have some thoughts on this as well after. Well, he's been playing all but one game a week, and that's more to do with me trying to uh, manage his health, you know. So, you know, I just I felt like we needed something a little bit different uh, tonight and, um, you know, wanted to get him in there, and I wanted to play Alex, and obviously, you know, Hayden's a guy we're going to leave in there right now. So that was the way to get all three of them in there. So after the game... You know, because we, we laughed about it uh, a good bit here. Uh, well, I don't know if laughed about it's the, the right way. We were just kind of like, oh, <laughs> Brady Neal's going to play right field tonight. And I was like, man, I, I really want to see it. I really want to see it. Uh, and after the game uh, last night, oh, I'm trying to find the uh, the tweet. Um, Jeffrey had, had tweeted at me and, and asked thoughts uh Thoughts on on Neil in, in right field? And I responded. I was like, well, nobody really hit him a ball, so I can't really have a take. I mean, I guess he looked cool out there, uh, but that's where we are. So here's the take that I have on that. I fully believe in, I mean, I'm not going to doubt anything that Jay just said on his reasoning for putting him out there. Your health, you know, you wanted to play Alex, but, you know, Neil, and you want to get him in there still and, and, and whatnot. Sure, 100%. I think it also has a lot to do with the fact that, uh, at the end of that cut we just played, he said, you're not taking Travinsky out right now. You're also not taking Brady Neal out right now. Brady Neal's your second leading hitter on this team. He's second in RBI. He's slugging damn near 730. He's second on the team in home runs. You have to have him in there. And if he keeps hitting the ball like that, you're always going to have to have him in there. You can't afford not to if he's going to do what he's doing right now. And when you, what's the, what's the old adage in baseball? If you can hit the ball, they'll find a spot for you in the field. 
What's been one of the most unsettled spots for LSU in the field? Corner outfield, specifically right. If Brady Neal can go out there and you can, for lack of a better term, hide him a little bit out there because I still haven't seen him get the field at all. Okay. If he's going to hit 364, be second on your team in homers, right now second in RBI and slug 730. And I know those numbers probably aren't going to keep up the pace all year. I get it. But just using that as you know where he is right now, sure. Play him. You want to play him in right field? Play him. LSU has a really, really, really good defensive club this year. Really good. They're fielding over 980 still. They're good. You can go ahead and, and do something like that, especially if Alex Malazzo is going to hit the baseball uh, uh, you know, and, and come through in spots like he has. He had a nice night, a single, an RBI ground out to produce a run, like really, really good night there. So I think that's absolutely part of that too, even though he didn't m- mention it there, is the guys hitting the ball, you have to have him in there. And if it's gonna, if you need to find a spot, that's probably a spot that you find. And if they're comfortable putting him out there, okay, fine. Uh, I say go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll with it. Um, he's behind the plate today, for what it's worth. But we'll get to the lineup uh, momentarily. One more thing from last night: Paxton Kling. Uh, it was a rough night. Hat trick, all three strikeouts swinging. We're the caller over for four. Jay Johnson obviously uh, asked last night about Paxton Kling going over, and, and here's what he had to say. I don't know. He's 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 super talented and hard worker and hard on himself and he'll be he'll be fine. Like he's just brings so much he doesn't have to he doesn't have to be the front line hitter to impact the game. I mean the, the going to get the ball in center field, getting on the bases, he's in scoring position from first base. Um, so we'll just keep working. You know, I know he's frustrated, but it, 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 we'll, we'll just keep working. We'll get after it tomorrow and, and get him better. So Kling's got to be in there too, uh, for what he just said. The defense, above all, I, I mean, there. I mean, we just talked about them having a really good defensive club. Paxton Kling's a huge part of that, and I, I say he has to be in there for that reason alone because I trust that the bat's going, going to come along. He's, he's too talented for it not to. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to happen today or you know this weekend in Starkville, but eventually. I think Paxton Kling will start to swing it. We've seen it in spurts at LSU. You just have to see it a little bit more consistently. So, look, he's too valuable of a glove out there in center field. You want to be strong up the middle. He helps you do that. Uh, Going into last night, the on-base was still at 471. It took a dip last night a little bit, but it's still around 450. So, I mean, he's he's still getting on base, and that's a good thing. Last night, sure, he looked like he was pressing a little bit, over-swinging a tad, sure, maybe, but... He's one of the toolsiest guys and the most ta- one of the most talented guys on this team. It, it will fall it will fall into place, and uh, he's back in there again today. We'll get you a full look at the lineup when we come back on the other side. We're going to grab a break here around the SEC and then uh, kind of the preview of LSU North Dakota State game number two, which is set to get underway here now in less than half an hour. Musso in for Moscona. It's Wednesday's AFR presented by Plucker. Stay here. AFR. Brought to you by Clegg's Nursery with four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. You know where to find them, but make sure that you're checking them out online and on Facebook. This is one of the things that I always tell you if you're wondering what they have, what the selection's like, what's new over at Clegg's. They do a great job every day when they get new shipments in of posting their new shipments that they get so you know um, uh, what they have, what their inventory is looking like at all the different stores. Now, I want to remind you of this. Um, They have some great weed-killing products. Uh, so Muse isn't a big fan of this. Sorry, bro. Um, I had to. Hey, 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 hey. Um, but there are products that they have to treat your lawn now before your grass starts to regrow to take care of weeds now. They got it at Clegg's Nursery. Ask about it. Buy local. Shop local. Clegg's Nursery. <laughs> Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com.
The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. We're brought to you by First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com. If you're thinking of buying land, go to firstsouthland.com. They're the best. First South Farm Credit. They've been in business since 1916. Uh, you've heard our buddy Ben McDonald talk about his experience. Ben's got some hunting property in Mississippi finance that land through First South Farm Credit. It doesn't matter if you if you live in Homa and you want to buy land in Mississippi or if you live in Baton Rouge and you want to buy land in Zachary, if you live in Monroe and you want to buy land in Alexandria or wherever it may be in Louisiana or any of the 48 contiguous states, First South Farm Credit can help you buy land. That recreational property, maybe your, your hunting uh, property, if it's the property to buy to, to build your dream home or if it's you know, 1,000 acres for agriculture, First South Farm Credit should be your first call. Go to the website at firstsouthland.com. That's firstsouthland.com. One more time, firstsouthland.com. All right, back here on a Wednesday edition of AFR. We're going to get to the LSU baseball lineup here momentarily, but first, let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference. Texas A&M! Texas A&M is set to name Nebraska's Trev Alberts as its new athletic director. Brent Zwerneman uh, from the Houston Chronicle was the first to report the news. Billy Lucci from Tex Ags has since confirmed that report. Alberts becomes the fourth athletic director at A&M in the past decade following Eric Hyman, Scott Woodward, and, of course, Ross, Ross Bjork, who just left for Ohio State. 
Some background on Albert, started his career in administration in 2009 at, uh, at the University of Omaha. He stayed there for a decade, then took the Nebraska job in 2021. Of course, his alma mater played linebacker there, won the Butkus in 1993. Consensus All-American and even has his number 34 retired. Now will be the athletic director at Texas A&M. The Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky basketball is set to launch an NIL fund on Thursday. This is according to Matt Jones uh, from Kentucky Sports Radio. It, the uh, NIL fund to be launched on Thursday with the, quote, purpose of making UK basketball the top NIL destination in college basketball. Cal- uh, even John Calipari is expected to be included in the launch of, a, of the third-party NIL entity. Calipari uh, 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 had launched the La Familia Club last June to help raise NIL dollars from former players, boosters, things of that nature. When you look at Kentucky, this uh, this NIL collective for ba- it, it will on Thursday will be solely focused on basketball. The 15 Club, launched in December of 2021, had the primary focus of serving the football program in Lexington. The Ole Miss Rebels. And Ole Miss has announced a extension for Chris Beard. Comes after a 20-win season uh, over there in Oxford. The first time in five years the Rebs reached 20 wins. They are likely to make their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2019. And then in addition uh, to the on-court success, Beard uh, really rejuvenated the fan base. Se- uh, season total attendance record at Ole Miss this year, including the single game record of 10,630 against rival Mississippi State. Although they announced the extension, uh, terms and length were not disclosed on the diamond last night in those all important midweek games. Georgia beat Iowa ten to five. Uh, Ole Miss downed UL Monroe five to three. Tennessee no problem with Eastern Kentucky seventeen to two. Florida fell to Florida State twelve to eight. Gators are ten and six. Florida State off to their best start since twenty fifteen. Uh, Kentucky handled Murray State. Auburn fell on the road at Troy eight to two. Number one, Arkansas victorious over Oral Roberts, 4-2. Vanderbilt dispatched of Indiana, 13-5. We know LSU beat North Dakota State, uh, 6-1. South Alabama defeated Mississippi State, 6-5, ending the Bulldogs' nine-game winning streak. They will face New Orleans tonight. Uh, We mentioned Texas A&M with the walk-off walk to beat Sam Houston State, 9-8. It was Missouri over Kansas, 5-4. Georgia State upset number 20 South Carolina 4-3. Alabama was upset on the road in Hattiesburg by Southern Miss 9-7. That is around the SEC. All right. Let's get a look at this LSU baseball lineup as they're set to get underway with North Dakota State coming up in about uh, just just a little bit over 15 minutes. Here's how the Tigers will line it up in game number two of this series. Mac Bingham will lead off and play left field. Tommy White back in the two-hole today at third base. Brady Neal... Uh, is back behind the plate, back in the lineup again, second consecutive day, but he's catching, and he'll hit third. Jared Jones at first and batting cleanup. Excuse me, Hayden Travinsky with DH and bat fifth. Josh Pearson playing second base, batting at sixth. Michael Braswell at short, hitting seventh. Paxton Kling moves down in the lineup to eighth. He's in center field, and Jake Brown will get the start in right field today and hit ninth. Griffin Herring on the bump for LSU getting the start. So, Some thoughts here. Uh, Bingham in the leadoff spot is interesting. Don't hate it. Um, Had two hits last night. Really needed those two hits as well. But it's got the speed, uh, definitely, for for a leadoff guy. So that's a plus there. Uh, Has shown the ability to work counts this year. That's a plus there. And the power's in there. It's sneaky, but it is in there. So he he checks most of the boxes. Think of it, uh, he's drawn a lot of comps kind of to Gavin Dugas just in what he could do for LSU this year. Maybe not. Totally on like doesn't have the power level of that of of a Dugas or not, but you you get my drift. You know what I mean. Like just in the value that he brings to a team. So you saw Dugas hitting that leadoff spot plenty. So uh, I, I like that uh, for for being him there. I like also moving Kling down in the lineup. That's going to help him obviously see more fastballs and hopefully get get his legs back underneath him there. Jake Brown getting the start. Love that and love being able to have Josh Pearson in the lineup, albeit at second base. Um, no Steven Milam on the surface looks questionable, obviously, but when you consider what happened with him last night with kind of the twisting of the knee, a rest day makes sense here. Get it, give him the rest. Make sure he's ready to go in Starkville. It is just always odd when you look at the lineup and see the leading hitter on the team missing, and that's not 
ever really something you expect and or something that I would ever recommend unless it's a situation like this. Uh, so that that makes sense as well. Uh, make sure he this weekend far more consequential than what's about to happen at the box right now. Of course, you want to win, but Stephen Milan's been awesome. He's arguably been one of, if not the MVP of this team early on with what he's done in the field and at the plate, just kind of like the complete player type thing. So make sure he's rested and ready to go to make his SEC debut um, this weekend. Griffin Herring on the bump. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, it was funny, you know, when you when you look back at the offseason, like the immediate offseason, confetti's just being cleaned up off the field at the Schwab, and you look at what LSU has returning for 2024 you know before that you didn't have Luke Holman you didn't have Gage Jump Griffin Herring was somebody that everybody thought okay that could be a candidate to slide into the starting rotation he's got the three four pitch mix that you need to do that I thought he looked awesome in his last out excuse me his last outing and needed to because uh, it was a rough one for him over over in Houston so that was great to see and excited to get him back on the bump here, uh, here in this game. You're not going to see him go very deep uh, in this game. Obviously, they're going to want Griffin Herring for the weekend, and and they should. What's going to be interesting to watch is the parade of relievers that LSU potentially runs out there today. I mean, you have plenty of guys that you can go ahead and get out there on the bump and get everybody you want some time and, and prepared for SEC play. I mean, Sam Dutton was warming up in the bullpen last night. I it would expect to see him. I wouldn't hate seeing Gavin Guidry for maybe an inning or so a couple batters in this game just to get him one more outing uh, underneath underneath his belt and Christian Little. I'll say the same thing uh, there with him. I'd really like to see Aiden Moffitt get some time in this game. I don't really know. I don't really think he's quite ready to contribute for you on a weekend, but I'd love to just see him get back out there. It's been a minute since Aiden Moffitt's uh, had some mound time. Same can kind of be said for a guy like Micah Bucknam. I definitely want to see Cam Johnson get some mound time in this game. So, I mean, you've got plenty, plenty guys that uh that you can run out there here. I mean, I, I again, I, I'd be a little surprised if we see somebody like Ackenhausen, but maybe. I mean, again, if it's short stint, I'm okay with it just to get him a little bit more mountain time. That that's one thing I would love to see them use today for is, is that. So uh, they're gonna get it underway here. We uh we'll keep you updated, but in the four and five o'clock hour, the conversation will shift a lot towards things other than baseball because if you're going to watch the baseball I mean it's what we do here every time when we're opposite is we talk about really kind of anything other than that because if you're watching the game you're going to watch the game and that's that's a-okay but I do hope you stick around because we got a lot of great stuff uh LSU football to talk about a little bit of a preview for LSU Mississippi State tomorrow in the SEC tournament but uh y'all know me I mean I'm gonna have one eye on the game for sure so I mean we'll We'll definitely have updates and, and commentary on, on some things that we see throughout there. But that's how LSU will line it up one more time uh, before you go through it quickly. Bingham, White, Neal, Jones, Travinsky, Pearson, Braswell, Kling, Brown, and Griffin Herring on the mound. All right, we're going to grab a break, come back on the other side. Wrap up hour number one with a uh, real juicy rumor out of free agency in the NFL. And... It deals with 2019 LSU. Let's talk about it a little bit to close out hour number one of AFR next. AFR. Love telling you about Glow Resources. Complete employer solutions. That's Glow Resources. That's Jareth Nockand and all my friends over at Glow. I remind you all the time about Glow Resources. It's G-L-O, glowresources.com. If you're a business owner, remember, that's who Glow works for. They work for you, the business owner. And it's not just in Baton Rouge. It's Baton Rouge, Houston. Miami, New Orleans, Orlando, Ridgeland. They got re- they got resources and they've got companies and locations all over and they can place employees anywhere for your job in any industry. Maybe it's mechanical or heavy machinery. Even if you need professional employee solutions, if you need management solutions, they've got you covered there as well. It's Glow Resources. Listen, hiring is, has been tough for so many businesses since COVID. Stop guessing. Let professionals at Glow help with complete employer solutions. It's Glow Resources. Again, learn more online at GLO, glowresources.com.
Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. It was a human day, barefoot children play, looking for the summer shade. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. You know, when we talk about Relief Windows every day, I always say windows, doors, siding. And now, shutters as well. They do your indoor shutters. Same thing as the windows custom made measure to fit your windows custom fit for your windows lifetime warranty on your windows your shutters but brandon you often hear say their number one product is customer satisfaction and that's not just a catchy line that's not a cliche phrase have an experience with relief windows and you'll understand they Go to the ends of the earth to make sure their customers are thrilled with the work they do. As a matter of fact, they never, Relief Windows never takes a dollar from you. You will not, no deposit, no down payment. They take all the risk. They will not take a dollar until you're thrilled with the work they do. Who else does that? Only Relief Windows. Check them out online at reliefwindows.com. All right, I love a good internet rumor. I mean, who does? Alondra, do you love a good inter internet rumor? Oh, I live for internet rumors. Paul, good internet rumor? All the time. Like yeah. the Kate Middleton stuff is... Yeah, I don't know what's happening with that. What it, it, Are people actually saying she's dead? That's what I've kind of grasped She might on that. be dead. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, it's not... Hopefully she's not dead, obviously. But, but the rumor is good, huh? But that's a good... Yeah. Also, a mistress is in, is in the question. But... That could open is, up a whole... This might be juicier. Uh, 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 this is uh, juicier, though. Uh, uh, uh. Um, so... Internet sports rumor here. I'm sure by now all of you have seen it that uh, the rumor was Justin Jefferson trade to the Bengals in works. And it all started from a, a Bengals fan account on Twitter that had text messages, like posted text messages from a friend of theirs who works with Joe Burrow's girlfriend at uh, Kroger headquarters in Cincinnati. And it was gossiping in the break room. They even, for some reason, like posted a picture of Joe Burrow's girlfriend's official LinkedIn account as well uh, to go with this. 
It's it's not going to happen. I mean, the Minnesota Vikings had to actually come out and give report, like give statements to Diana Rossini and others that they have no plans of trading Justin Jefferson, which uh, enjoy catching passes from Sam Darnold Jets. That kind of stinks. But um, all that to say, while I sit here and tell you, probably not going to happen. Money's tight, obviously. There, Burrow's the top of the quarterback market. They got to give. They got to pay just uh, Jamar Chase here. They'd also probably have to pay Justin Jefferson at that point. It's just not feasible. But all that to be said, I'm sitting here telling you right now, I'm choosing to believe this. I think this guy, he does have sources. His friend does work with Joe Burrow's girlfriend. And Justin Jefferson is going to end up in uh, Cincinnati because I just want anything that has to do with 2019 LSU to live on forever. So even though it's not going to happen, I'm choosing to believe this rumor. Hour number two is coming up next. We're going to preview Pell's Cavs with Christian Clark. That's on the other side. Don't move and be back with us. AFR. Brought to you by Shabills Tire and Auto Service. Shabillstire.com. 18 locations in South Louisiana. Find the location nearest you at Shabillstire.com. Bumper to bumper auto service and name brand tires at wholesale prices. They will always find a way to get you the best possible price for the best possible tires on the road. That's what they do at Shabills. And when they get you in by selling you the best tires, the cheap, cheapest price possible, they're going to treat you like family, and they're going to treat you so good, you're going to keep coming back year after year after year every time you need anything for your vehicle. Tires rotated, oil changed, check engine light on, brake squeaking, whatever's wrong with your vehicle, bring it to Shabills. Let them give it the once over, and you can always schedule online so it's convenient. Shabillstire.com. Find the location nearest you at Shabillstire.com. Shop tires online at Shabillstire.com. Be sure to ask about the Shabills credit card as well, because you can save fifty dollars off your first purchase when you use the Shabills credit card only at Shabills. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event, and we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, 
your number one park system in the nation. I'm Christine Lisi. Massive news on reigning AL Cy Young winner Garrett Cole. The Yankees ace has been shut down. He's scheduled to visit Dr. Neil Elitrash in Los Angeles for further testing on his right elbow. He is expected to start this season on the injured list. The Chargers released receiver Mike Williams, saved $20 million against the cap. Move made the team cap compliant for the start of the new league year today. The seventh overall pick in the 2017 draft, now a free agent. ESPN's Dan Orlovsky. Tennessee still needs to add a guy. Indianapolis is in the conversation. New England, it's just with Mike, the the, the health has always yeah. been a concern. And you just, he's going to have to find a place that is going to give him one of those deals. You know, it's a little bit contingent on how much you play, not necessarily, but necessarily your talent. Williams' last two seasons have been marred by injury. Linebacker Khalil Mack agreed to a restructured contract, so he remains with L.A. next season, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter. Another offensive lineman added by the Jets as they continue to reinforce the protection for quarterback Aaron Rodgers. They're acquiring Ravens right tackle Morgan Moses as part of a pick swap. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ Chris Candy coming up Thursday with free agency in full effect. I'll tell you which teams have improved themselves the most this offseason. It's on Sportsmanlike 6 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Welcome in hour number two after further review on a Wednesday presented by Pluckers Wing Bar. Musso filling in for Moscona, Alondra Villarreal, and Paul O'Neill along for the ride as well. They're just set to get underway at Alec Box Stadium, LSU and North Dakota State, game number two of that midweek season uh, series. Excuse me, we'll keep you updated on that as we continue to go along here in the final two hours of the show. But in order to switch gears a little bit from that, the New Orleans Pelicans don't look now for game winning streak and uh, really playing some great basketball on both ends of the floor. Welcome in the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight to the Smoothie King Center. Christian Clark, NOLA.com here to join us and uh, talk all about it. Christian, we appreciate the time. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you today? Doing fantastic, man. Look, Really looking forward to getting some eyes on this Pelicans team tonight. This seems like it's going to be a really, really good test against uh, a, a playoff team out of the East right now in the Cavs. Uh, we'll get to that game in a minute. But before that, mentioned kind of off the top there, four-game winning streak. But what really catches the attention is the three-game sweep of that road trip. What did you see from the Pels when they were able to, to go through um, – uh, finishing off with the Hawks, obviously, on, on Sunday, but also the Sixers and the Raptors. Yeah, I think just handling business against teams the Pelicans needed to handle business against. That three-game road trip, they've got to play the Toronto Raptors without Scotty Barnes. They got to play the Philadelphia 76ers without Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, and then they got to play the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young. Faced three teams with, with all, without their best players, in some cases without their best two players, those are games you need to win if you want to be a team that, that gets a top six seed in the Western Conference. The Pelicans did that. That's That's been really, I think, a, a characteristic of this team is different than in years past. Like, you know, there's so often, like, this team would go on road trips out east. It's like three they're supposed to win, and they go two and one, or they go one and two. They just find some way where there's a blemish. And I think that's the difference between this year's team and a lot of Pelicans teams we've seen in the past. They're just uh, a little bit more serious. Trey Murphy has obviously been at the center of this. I mean, look, he got off to a, a slow start early in the season, but down the stretch here, he has really, really come on. What kind of progress have, have you seen from him after the slow start to now, and is it at all surprising? No, I, I don't think it's surprising at all. I mean, it's been an interesting season for Trey. I mean, I think people in the Pelicans organization – we're really excited about him coming into the season. And then he tears a meniscus in his left knee during training camp or right before training camp. And that knocks him out for the first 20 games. I thought he, I thought he looked great initially after coming back and he missed 
couple of games with knee soreness and then struggled for a period of time after that. You know, what he's been able to do these last two weeks or so is, you know, the guy I thought the Pelicans were going to get this season. I mean, Trey was, you know, almost a, a 50, 40, 90 guy last year. I think, you know, I think he finished seventh in most improved player voting last year. I mean, one of the more improved players in the NBA last year. And, you know, this is a guy who's got range out to 30 feet. I think that's what makes him unique as a shooter, not just three-point shooting, but the ability to consistently make shots several feet beyond the three-point arc. And athleticism, too. I mean, there's a guy who finished runner-up in the slam dunk contest last year. I mean, he's really got some bounce. He's, he's this intriguing combination of outside shooting, four-stretching ability, and athleticism at the rim. Then there's Herb Jones. Um Man, it seems like every year we're having a conversation about Herb Jones, uh, all defensive team, defensive player of the year. Like eventually, that's got to happen for him at some point. He, he just he's been a, a model of consistency there for the Pelicans. Willie Green, whenever he talks about Herb, whether it's in the post game or, or leading into the game, he talks about just the impact he has on everybody else on the floor. So, I mean, from your vantage point, from your perspective. What is that impact? Why is Herb able to have that on everybody else on the floor? Yep. Did we lose Christian? We lost him. All right, trying to reconnect uh, with Christian Clark. There. I mean, Herb Herb Jones, y'all. He has been um, he he's been awesome uh, all season so far for the Pelicans. Christian, do we have you back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're, uh, uh, I think you're talking about Herb Jones. Yeah, Herb, I mean, it's just it, it, every year. I mean, we, we have the conversation about him and how just the model of consistency that he's been. And I was asking, you know, Willie Green always talks about the impact that Herb's able to have on everybody else on the floor with his play. From your perspective, what is or why is Herb able to have that impact on everybody else with his play? Yeah, I mean, I think like one of the most surprising things about the Pelicans over the past two years is that They've been sixth in a row in defense two years in a row. I think if you'd ask people in the Pelicans organization for the start of last season, how do you think you'll be defensively? I think there are some question marks internally. I think it's been surprising to people in the Pelicans organization that they have been a top 10 defense two years in a row. And I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why. But I think if you're looking at, like, the person most responsible, I think it's got to be Herb Jones. I mean, every single night, taking the other team's best player, you know, he's really good on the ball, and, and he has been since his rookie year, but he's good covering for teammates, too. And I think that's a lot of where his value is. Like, he's really reading where all the players are on the floor. And, like, he's just got this ability to kind of diagnose plays before they happen, to anticipate. And, like, you know, if he sees one of his teammates getting beat, he just quickly gets over there, puts out that fire, gets back to his guys. He's the guy getting beat, puts out that fire, gets back to his guys. That over and over again that that makes him so special. And I think just, you know, a really beloved teammate too, like just a really selfless guy, humble guy. And I think that that all defensive not is, is probably coming this year finally. Yeah, I mean it oh, it has to happen eventually for Herb. I mean he's he's just been in, incredible on the defensive end really since he's since he's gotten to New Orleans. Um Another big question that everybody always seems to bring up, and it happened again this year, or you know, really around the All Star break and coming out of it, is is the lineups that the Pelicans like to send out there. For for you, does it seem like they've kind of really started to settle in on on, on how they want to use the guys that they have here down the stretch? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think for there was a period of time earlier in the season when there were some questions: Do they need to change their starting lineup? I think the Pelicans' starting lineup. It's just been okay if you look at the numbers this year. Um, I think it's gotten a little bit better as the season has gone along, but you're at the point now where I don't think you're going to see starting lineup change. You know, they've they've done some interesting things like start Larry Nance Jr. for Jonas Valanciunas to begin the second halves in some of these games mm -hmm. here. Um, but yeah, I, I do think they've they've settled on some stuff. Um, you know, like. I think their bench has the second best point differential of any bench unit in, in the NBA. Um, it's a lot of these, you know, lineups with Zion or BI out there and just a bunch of, you know, kind of defensive minded role players surrounding them. And that's been a pretty good formula for the Pelicans. They're, they're really beaten up on other teams when it's one of Zion or BI and, you know, a lot of these bench guys out there. 
All right, let's look at tonight's game. Of course, the Pels, they will welcome in uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Cavs currently uh, the third seed in the East, so you're going to get, obviously, good competition here. New Orleans looking for victory number five uh, in this ball game. Uh, looking at it right now, it looks like uh, Evan Mobley will not be out there for the Cavs, and nor will uh, Max Struess or uh, Ty Jerome or Donovan Mitchell. So when you look at this game tonight for the Pelicans, uh, how do they go ahead and get win number five against Cleveland, win, uh, win number five in a row against Cleveland? Yeah, the last I saw, Donovan Mitchell was questionable. Okay. I mean, that's obviously like a huge swing factor in this game. Um, I think one of the, the matchups I'm really interested in is the the Cavs have been starting um, Georges Niang at, at power forward. I mean, Niang is going to have to guard one of Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson, um, and I guess unless they put Jared Allen on Zion. But I just think the Pelicans are going to have an advantage at forward based on who the Cavs throw out there. Like, I think it could be – you know, a really big night for, for Zion at BI just based on who the Cavs have been throwing out there at Ford. And then, you know, whether Donovan Mitchell plays, whether he doesn't, um, you know, if the Cavs still have Darius Garland in there, I just think containing on the perimeter is always so important for, for this Pelicans team. Hey, give me a thought on this on this stretch as, as well that New Orleans is coming up. I mean, you have obviously the Cavs in tonight and then the Clippers. That's going to be a massive game on Friday because, I mean, New Orleans right now, I mean, Talk about don't look now. They're two games out of the four spot uh, behind behind those Clippers, and, and you'll get them in the in your building uh, on Friday night. I mean, it's two games, so it might sound kind of crazy to even ask this, but I mean, is it realistic that the Pels can find their way into the top four of the West right now? I, I think it is, and you know, if you watched Timberwolves Clippers last night, Kawhi Leonard left that game with a back injury. He left the arena, which is probably never a good sign. I mean, I think. You know, if it's a situation where Kawhi Leonard is going to miss a handful of games here, that that certainly boosts the Pelicans' odds. Um, Clippers have been interesting. They look, you know, they just got red hot earlier this season and really found their stride with Harden, and they've kind of cooled off since. And, you know, I've gone from thinking, oh, man, I would want no part of the Clippers in a playoff series to, to liking the Pelicans' chances a little bit more. I don't know if I'd pick the Pelicans. Um, but the Clippers do look a little bit vulnerable right now, and, you know, as we know in New Orleans, health is so important. Uh, if Kawhi's going to miss some time, I, I do think it is doable for the Pelicans to get in that top four. All right, that's Friday, so we got we got to get through tonight. Tonight, tonight's going to be a big step for him as well. Christian Clark here previewing it with us all. Covers the Pels for Nola.com. He's on Twitter at cclark underscore thirteen. Y'all give him a follow. He does great. He does great work. Christian, we appreciate the time as always, man. Thank you, and we'll do it again soon. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Again, that's Christian Clark. Y'all follow him on Twitter at C Clark underscore 13 Pels and Cavs tonight from the blender. That is uh that's a big one. Pels can get not only uh, their fifth consecutive victory tonight, but they can also get win number 40 on the season. So, I mean, and, and look, two games out of the four spot, I mean, home, home playoff games. Like, so that's uh that. They have a lot to play for here now down the stretch. The Pelicans are interesting. They're a lot of fun to watch, and uh, that should be a really, really good one tonight uh, in the blender. All right, we're going to grab a break, come back on the other side. We're going to talk some LSU football. Three up, three down inning for Griffin Herring in the top of the first. Mac Bingham about to step in uh, to get LSU's half of the inning underway. LSU is facing Matt Sargent from North Dakota State. He has had um, he's had a rough year, uh, to put it mildly. An ERA over 17, nine walks, and like, three in the third inning or so. It's been a rough go of it for him. So LSU should have plenty of opportunities. We'll continue to keep you updated there. Uh, hour number two of AFR rolls on next. Stay here. AFR. Brought to you by Action Industries. Make sure you check them out online, on Facebook or on LinkedIn. It's Action Industries. And, of course, when you're at the box. Every single game, all year long, out at the box. If you see a mound visit, those mound visits all season long are brought to you by Action Industries. Action Industries is a great industrial contractor that served the petrochemical and refinery markets, all the plants up and down the river for 40 years, since 1982, going on 41 years now in business. And listen, there's two things that I've learned. Talking to, uh, talking to Chuck and all the gang over there at Action Industries. Number one, you do not get hired to work in those plants if you don't have an exemplary safety record. At Action Industries, their safety record beats the industry standard, and you don't get rehired if you don't do quality work. Well, Action Industries has been around 
for 40 years. Check them out online. It's Action Industries. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Always a pleasure to tell you about our friends at the Williamson Eye Center. Check them out online at williamsoneye.com. They've got locations all over the greater Baton Rouge area. On the Baton Rouge General Campus, I mean, you turn off a blue bonnet onto Picardy, you make that right. And then right there at the stop sign, the building on the right, the first two floors, that's the Williamson Eye Center, state-of-the-art dry eye center, and it's full service. Of course, they have their state-of-the-art surgery center there where you can have your LASIK or whatever surgical procedure you're having, but they have your standard annual eye exam as well at the Williamson Eye Center. Learn more at williamsoneye.com. The thing I tell you every day is take the advice that I was given and change your life. To give yourself the gift of sight is absolutely incredible. If you're someone like me who spent your life with contacts or glasses, there is a way to be done with it forever. WilliamsonEYE.com. Go see Dr. Blake Williamson for that free consultation. 924-2020. 924-2020 or WilliamsonEYE.com for the Williamson Eye Center. Sometimes you just are who uh, who your record, or in this case stats, say you are. That is the case with uh, North Dakota State starter Matt Sargent, LSU in business early in the bottom of the first. The base is loaded. Tommy White with a one-out double and then back-to-back -back walks. So the last thing we said before we went to break was Sergeant had about nine walks and three and a third inning or something coming in. He's already got two in the first inning, and the bases are loaded for Hayden Travinsky. LSU looking to break through early in the bottom of the first inning over at the box. Um, so I saw this yesterday, and 
stashed it to talk about today because knew there would be, you know, some other things that we had to get to yesterday and having the baseball game and whatnot would need content, you know, away from that. Um, when you look at LSU's offense this year, there's high expectation once again, and there should be. There's plenty of talent. I mean, you're never going to lack for talent at a, at a skill position at LSU. We know that, and you see that again. You even added to it when you went and got Xavier Thomas, C.J. Daniels out of the out of the transfer portal, um, Kyron Lacy back, the whole host of guys that you have, you know, behind that, Chris Hilton, Aaron Anderson. We could go on and on and on. You know, but. What's odd is that the expectation is still so high when LSU is having to replace the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. And, I mean, that is the situation that LSU is in. Not only the Heisman Trophy winner, the best offensive player in college football last year was Jaden Daniels. I mean, without him, where is LSU, especially with the defensive struggles that they had? His importance could not actually be really like, I mean, it was immeasurable. That guy's gone, along with Brian Thomas, along with Malik Neighbors. Like, what you actually do lose is massive. So that's why this was really, really interesting to me because that, I mean, we just haven't, we haven't talked it. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, you know, they're going to be good on offense, whatever. We've kind of glossed over it. So ESPN, this was a, a staff report from them. They looked at their top 25 teams um, and ranked the future at quarterback for each team. And LSU, I'm sorry, this was not the staff report. This was from Adam Rittenberg. So Adam Rittenberg went through and ranked the future of quarterback for each team. And... LSU came in at number eight. And that's significant because they moved up from where they were last year. Like it just further drives home what what we were just saying to lead off this segment, how they are losing Heisman Trophy winner, best offensive player, and everyone still feels great about it. Like, for you to lose that and to go up from 12, where they were preseason last year, to 8 is massive. So what they um, what they note, Garrett Nussmeyer obviously taking over the reins, but they note A.J. Swan coming into the transfer portal from Vanderbilt and um, bolstering, uh, bolstering your depth there, Ricky Collins, who will now have a second year in the program under Joe Sloan. They even mentioned Colin Hurley. Who you know was a high four star recruit and, and comes in out of um, out of high school, and it's just so crazy to think about. Eh, we don't have to rehash the entire history of, of quarterback at LSU, but the contrast is just so damn real that you you can't just gloss over it. LSU is a quarterback graveyard. We know that. Even after Joe Burrow left, I mean. A large part of the next offseason was, oh man, is Miles Brennan going to, you know, how's Miles Brennan going to do? What's that going to look like with Miles Brennan? Our center? You're not doing that now. You just go, okay, Garrett Nussmar's going to go out there and do well. And you brought in AJ Swan, who's a very capable backup. Ricky Collins is going to be in the second year. You know, he's he's got talent. Colin Hurley's here. Oh, by the way, Bryce Underwood, the number one player in the entire country, is a quarterback. He's committed to you next year. You're just rolling with it now. It's wild to think that that's where you are, but it is. And it's even more evidenced by Adam Rittenberg's ranking there with LSU moving up, losing all of that. So let's talk about that quarterback room a little bit. And I know many of y'all are. I am too. I'm fired up, fired up to watch Garrett Nussmeyer take the reins of this offense, especially after what we saw in the bowl game. I can remember sitting in this chair, filling in for Matt. It was the week of the bowl game, like leading in quote-unquote game week right there. And we talked an awful lot about Garrett Nussmeyer that whole week here on AFR and, and what it would look like for him. What did it need to look like? What was fair expectation? And... 
you had two sides of that argument where a lot of people wanted to see him go out there and absolutely dominate and just put up the show and and that's what you were expecting and I was kind of sitting there to myself going okay look yeah but I mean of course I want to see that but you still have a full spring to go through you'll have camp like there'll be plenty of time for development I wouldn't read too too much in to what he puts up there he just needs to go out there play a steady game lead LSU to victory and what I constantly said was not make the catastrophic mistake in that ball game and Garrett Nussmeyer did, I mean, he went above and beyond that. 395 yards, 99-yard game-winning drive in that game. He was awesome. He went out there and had the game that most people expected him to have and, and, and said was fair expectation, to go out there and just dominate. And he did it. But the thing that was most impressive to me was he didn't make the catastrophic mistake. Garrett Nussmeier is going to throw a few interceptions. That's fine. The Wisconsin game, like what you saw from him in that game is the prototype. That's the blueprint for him to be incredibly successful in 2024 at LSU. 395 yards. I get it. He's not going to throw for 400 yards every game. But 395 yards, three touchdowns. One interception. And when that interception happened, yes, it was right before halftime. It wasn't a great decision. Into, into coverage, safety came, you know, over the top there, uh, or really right through. Uh, Brian Thomas got the pick. You were trying to go score right before half. That's going to happen. What was more impressive than that is when you're still behind, he leads you on the comeback in crunch time, in tight spots, and doesn't make that mistake. That's huge. That's growth that you can build on here now in spring and then in fall camp. And then in the opener, when you're all ready to go against USC in Vegas. So love that. When I look at a guy like AJ Swan, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, that's a guy who's got close to 4,000 yards passing in his career in, in the two years at Vanderbilt. He has experience in the league. So if something happens to Garrett Nussmeyer, you have a, experienced backup that you can hand the ball to and say, okay, go, like, go, go right the ship for us. Go take over, go do this. I mean, it's something we talk about with the, uh, with the New Orleans Saints so much is having that experienced backup. They did it with Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, like it, on and on and on, you know, the list. And it proved to be very valuable for them. I think LSU is in a great situation and you had to do that. You couldn't go into it with just Ricky Collins and, and Colin Hurley. Not to say that they're not talented, not to say that they can't have some type of impact uh, in their time at LSU. I hope that they do. But you had to go get somebody, and you got someone you feel very comfortable with in, in A.J. Swan. Not for him to come in and, and really you know compete for a starting job. Maybe he pushes Garrett a little bit, but definitely to be that solid veteran backup piece that, uh, that ultimately you need. So you love that. It's just... They're in great shape. And that's something that we have not had the luxury of saying around here often. And I know you all know that. But I would just reiterate the point one more time. Have you noticed how we've all just rolled with it now? We're used to it. And that's a great thing. Because none of us could have foresaw that just six years ago. And here you are. It's just, yeah, Garrett's got this. What are they? Let's fix the defense. Garrett's got this. Sample size, small, but shows you that he does. I mean, it's, you, you look at the career for a guy like Nuss, 1,700 yards, just about 59% completion. Like, those are all great numbers to build on. For him this year and what you saw in the bowl game is the great launching point that you wanted it to be so onward for the LSU quarterback room which ESPN despite losing the best offensive player in college football despite losing the Heisman Trophy winner in Jaden Daniels moved up four spots in its stability and potential for the year 2024 number eight LSU up from number 12 last year that's awesome, and I can't wait to see it. All right, we're going to grab a break. Come back on the other side. 
Uh, we'll get you an update from the box as LSU uh, puts up three runs in the first inning to take a three to nothing lead. And we'll do some Pluckers trivia as well as, of course, it's Wednesday. And uh, that's what we do here. Presented by Pluckers. It's a big trivia night over at Pluckers, both locations. So we'll get some Pluckers trivia for you as well. Tigers and the pros still to come. Sean Fazan in the next hour. It is a Wednesday edition of AFR. Musso in for Moscona. Don't you move. AFR. Brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. 752-0001-752-0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. I love sharing five-star Google reviews. Here's one from Ricky Gomez, who said, Chris, his technician, was very professional and knowledgeable, uh, and knowledgeable during the HVAC evaluation. He provided details and recommendations in a clear and concise manner. That's one of the things that always stands out. After, if, you ha- if you're having an issue with your AC or your heater and River City's one hour air sends, uh, sends out a technician for an evaluation, they're going to explain your options to you. And that may sound simple, but like none of it, like I don't know anything about an HVAC, neither do you. Let's be honest. So whenever they go get up in your attic or they go look at your HVAC unit on the side of your house and they come talk to you, like they're going to explain very clearly what's happening and your options to remedy it. It's River City's One Hour Air. Look for the big yellow vans and trucks with the giant clock on the side. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and body. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Brought to you by South Point Volkswagen. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, look no further than South Point Volkswagen, or should I say at least Volkswagen on your list. If you've never driven a Volkswagen, never thought about a Volkswagen, 
nine different IIHS top safety picks. That's the highest safety designation you can get. And you drive knowing you have the security of one of the safest vehicles on the road. They're so fun to drive. The great German engineering without the cost of other luxury brands. And they're built right here in the US of A at their Chattanooga, Tennessee plant. So you're supporting American jobs as well. South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer on airline just north Highland and online at southpointvw.com. All right, so the Tigers have a 3 to nothing lead over North Dakota State in the top of the second. Griffin Herring uh, working the 2-2 count here. Already K'd the first batter. Uh, LSU scored all three runs there in, uh, in the bottom of the first without the benefit of a hit. Some shady defense from the Bison and... Um, <laughs> and some even more shady pitching uh, from our guy, Matt Sargent, allowed all three of those runs to be pushed across. LSU loaded the bases with a double from White, a walk from Neal, and from Jones. Travinsky uh, hit what looked like a tailor-made double play ball, and they were going to potentially get out of the inning, but it ends up only being uh, Fielder's choice. He reaches there. The ball is thrown. He grounded it to third. It's thrown into right field, so you have Fielder's choice, throwing error. One run comes in to score. After a strikeout from Josh Pearson, the bases uh, obviously remain loaded. Braswell's hit by a pitch. That forces across run number two. Paxton Kling is walked. That forces across one number three, and Brown would end it uh, on, a, on a fielder's choice as well. So, look, I, again, we, we talked about it in the first uh, hour of the show. I don't care how you get the runs. Just get the runs. It's the only column of the game that actually matters at the end. It's what decides it. Get runs any way you can. Again, they're not going to apologize for you know scoring, putting up a three spot without the benefit of a hit. Uh, you took advantage of a of a pitcher who str- struggles mightily with command. In the meantime, Griffin Herring continues to mow him down. I mean, he's looked awesome so far in this ball game. I'm, as I see it right now, he's sitting at thirty six pitches. We'll see how long they let him go. You obviously want Herring in your bullpen at some point. Uh, this weekend against Mississippi State, but fastball's been its normal 91-93 from the hand to Herring. Change-ups look pretty good, uh, as has the slider. So, I mean, he's, he's you know, rolling along. Uh, well, he just misfielded that ground ball there, but that's okay. Uh, he'll go ahead and... Uh, he's a pitcher. You know, that happens. Uh, pitchers are athletes. Not trying to ruffle feathers out there, but... Uh, so that's that's the first base runner he's allowed in the ball game so far. So he just called for the bullpen. Well, uh, Jay did. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Thirty-eight pitches, get him out of there. Two and two thirds, thirty-eight pitches. It's it's uh, Kate Anderson all over again. Who's coming in, Alondra? You're ahead. You remain ahead of me over there. Christian Little. All right, I love that. This is what Matt must you love feel that? like. I do. I like that a lot. This must be what Matt feels like whenever I'm over there, yeah. not paying attention to him at all and doing nothing but watching the baseball game. I'm kind of paying attention. No, it. It's fine. You're not. I understand. I, I know how it goes on days like this over there. I, I've done it multiple times now. Uh, but I, but see, I've seen both sides of it. I've had to host the show opposite yeah. and just produce it. Producing it's way better. It is. Way, well, I've never hosted it's, it's way, it's way better. Yeah. Uh, it's just take, take, yeah, take, no, take my word. It's way better. I mean. Uh, when the game's on, yeah. just be over there. Yeah. You can, you can. So, but no, that's all right. I'll, I'll have to tell him when he gets back. I'll be like, I, I get, I it, get now. it. Yeah, I get it. I got a. Alondra gave me a taste of my own medicine <laughs> uh, over there with that. But um, he gets uh, like he gets it with me too, or he used to get it with me too. Whenever uh, I would do whiskey and wine, because like sometimes uh, UFC fights would be on, and I'd have it like on my phone. Up there. Yeah. yeah, not even paying attention. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully nothing ever really goes wrong there. Uh, with. <laughs> You pay too much attention to that show. Yeah, it's, it gets a little edgy sometimes there uh, on, on Whiskey and Wine. All right. Um, That's true. So Christian Little's coming in for the Tigers. We'll continue to keep you posted there. Um, it's Wednesday. We're presented by Pluckers every week here on AFR. And that means it's time for Pluckers Trivia. It's time for Pluckers Trivia. How many will Musso get wrong today? Ah! Pluckers Trivia. Every Wednesday night, 7.30 at Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock at Nicholson. None! That's how many Musso gets wrong today. I have to say, last Take that, time... voice guy. Last huh? time I did this, I went one for three. Okay. Hey, so... I better than me. Paul? Paul, you went two and one, if I recall, right? I believe so. I think you did. I think you did. Because okay, well, I was then like, I'm going to need Paul to help me out. Well, I was like, I, I would have gotten the two that you got as well. 
And then, I That's mean, what today. You say. Well, no, I would have. That's would what you, you say. have? They were what easy. Say. What they were, were they? Easy. I don't remember. I mean, then that how was, do you know if you would have gotten it or not? Alondra, if you don't remember was, the questions. That was December. That was bowl week. It was the last time I hosted a Wednesday show. We still only goes three or no when it's anime. That was luck. That, that was incredible luck. That's embarrassing. It was multiple choice. I've, I've, I've told them. I've watched one anime, I think, in my entire life. And it was for a class in college. It was like this World War II anime thing about the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually pretty entertaining. Um, but that's it. Like, it's the one, one thing. Uh, all right. What's the theme? Well, there is no theme. Oh. That's, that's the thing. There, there is no theme today. It looks like we got a, we got a sports one in here. We have a, a film one in okay. here. Okay. Yeah, so we might have this, Paul. Y'all might. Y'all are gonna team up on this. Yeah, we'll team up. I never get a lot. Or are we competing? When I do this. Are we competing or teaming up? We can team up. Okay. All right. So just gonna throw that Paul out there. Paul doesn't want beef with me. Well, no, I I never get a lifeline when I get to do this, but you know. You can call. You can call me next time. Uh, yeah. Next Wednesday, you can call me. I'll be your lifeline. All right. All right. Here we go. Y'all ready? Mm hmm All right. Pluckers trivia tonight. Both locations, uh, of course, as always. So get over there. All right, Christian Little. Comes in and gets the strikeout. I told you I liked it. Looking, too. Look at that. Punch out. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. Question one. Which university's football stadium is the United States' largest by maximum capacity sports arena? Which university's football stadium in the United States is the, lar is, is the United States' largest sports arena, and that's by maximum capacity? Any ideas here, Paul? I'm assuming we're going football. Yeah, which university's football stadium is the United States' largest sports arena? I mean, doesn't LSU hold like a lot? LSU holds like a hundred something, hundred and two thousand something, or hundred and one thousand something. I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I don't think it's LSU, but no. my gut's telling me it's Michigan. Um, probably up north. It's Michigan, Ohio State, probably my my go-to one-two. I'm gonna. We well, have to. Have, you can't have both. Okay. Michigan will be my guess. Michigan. It is Michigan. Okay. Yes. Alondra, find the uh, find the dean. Oh on there. yeah, where is it? Uh, I always forget about this part. The dean. There we go. There we go right there. All right, one out of one. One out of one. Question two. We ready for question two? Yeah. All right. Adam Smith's book, The Wealth of Nations, oh. popularized what economic system in which groups of people are free from almost any form of economic intervention. I don't even know what any of that means. Yeah, that, that was Adam to Smith. Me. Was a lot, wasn't it? Adam Smith, I think that's capitalism, isn't it? I mean, is that your guess? What do you think, Paul? I have no clue. We're gonna go do, you want, do you want the question again? Please. Or, okay. Adam Smith's book, The Wealth of Nations, yes. popularized what economic system in which groups of people are free from almost any form of economic intervention? Capitalism. No. Oh. <laughs> it is uh, the laissez-faire. Oh, okay. Laissez-faire. You, 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 you have to give yourself a, a, a wrong answer. Yeah. There we go. I would have never got that. Yeah, me either. That's horrible. Like, I didn't know it was going to be French. Yeah, I... Adam Smith is a very American name. It's a very generic name. Yeah, it sounds you, fake. Yes, like he made yeah, that up. That's like a pseudonym. I don't think that's his real name. It'd be a bad pseudonym, though. I I don't think so. Well, maybe not, because it is so generic. Yeah. But then again, it could be any Adam Smith. So I think that's why it's bad. Yeah. All right, last one. Y'all are one All right, and one. All right, come on, Paul. One and one. Need this one to uh, avoid the losing day. In 1996... Which 31-year-old future Best Supporting Actor oh my Academy Award winner was arrested for trespassing after being found passed out in the bedroom of his neighbor's home? I want to say... Sounds like a it, wild How, how recent night. was this question made? Like, is this, like, following these Oscars? I I don't know, Alondra. I mean, we'd have to ask Steve Robert Levy that. Here? I have no idea. <laughs> 31. He was 31 and he was arrested because he was drugged up. In 1996, which 31 year old future best supporting actor winner? Well, because he just won. That was that thing. okay. Was arrested for trespassing after being found passed out in a bedroom of his neighbor's home. Can we get another hint? You didn't get any hints. 
I want to say Robert Downey Jr., but I don't know how that's recent. I don't know how recent like he made this question. You know I'm what I mean? This event occurred in 1996. The event occurred in 19. Yes, he was right. arrested in 96. Hmm. I'm gonna. Uh, I can't think of anybody else. Yeah, that's that's as good as a guess I can get. I really don't know. What's your? What is it? Robert Downey Jr. Correct. Yay! Let's go. Was. Was Robert Downey Jr. Let's go. There you go. That's Pluckers trivia for today. Y'all get over to yeah. Uh, I'm better than Moose. Both Pluckers. You also had help. Uh, Barely. You, you also had help. Wow. <laughs> he wow. helped me. No, he helped me with the Film first one. Film is not one. my strong suit. He helped me with the first Alondra. one. The both of us were clueless on the second one, and then the third. Uh, but like, that third one's like confirmation. Like, okay, yeah. And then the first one was confirmation too. Like we just kind of confirmed with each other. But why are we throwing so much shade I at don't Paul O'Neill? No, I'm not throwing shade at Paul. You just <laughs> threw shade at Paul. Yeah, but you had help barely. That's I mean, the definition of throwing shade. I mean, shade. is it shade? I, mean, I really if it's didn't true? help on the on the film question. Yeah. Paul, <laughs> is it shade if it's true? Yeah. I don't know. It's still shade. I didn't help with that one. I mean, it's still shade. Yeah. All right, y'all get y'all get over to either location of Plucker tonight. Nicholson and Blue Bonnet live action trivia. It's always a great time. Um, I'm just glad I didn't have to be chastised uh, for getting questions wrong this week. Yeah, well, back, when he gets back, I was about to say back to I'll your regularly scheduled programming next Wednesday. <laughs> I'm definitely going to tell him that we got we went two for three. Oh, don't worry, he's going to ask me, and I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to tell. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw in the caveat that y'all got to team up, and I never get I never get a lifeline, and I. I'm going to demand an inquiry into that. Okay. All right. I guess. All right. All right. We're going to grab a break. LSU's up three to nothing at the box. Bottom of the second. They got a runner on first. That's Mac Bingham, Tommy White at the plate in a 2-2 count. Tigers and the pros wraps up our number two of AFR next. AFR. AFR is brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel, two beautiful hotel properties in Baton Rouge, the Watermark downtown, the Renaissance South Town right there on Blue Bonnet. And when it comes to hosting your event, both the Watermark and the Renaissance are perfect. The Watermark is a gorgeous, elegant spot in downtown Baton Rouge. That wedding reception, that smaller gathering, that meeting space, they can do it. They've kept so much of the history and tradition uh, uh, of that iconic building while modernizing it. The Gregory is a great restaurant inside of the Watermark as well. And then, of course, the Renaissance Hotel. Southtown, right there on Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge. It's more modern. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous hotel property at the Renaissance Hotel where they have meeting space that can accommodate up to 500 people, 7,000 square foot of meeting space, perfectly located right off of Blue Bonnet and I-10. It's the Watermark and the Renaissance Hotels in Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a humid day Barefoot children play Looking for its summer shade
BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. All right. Interesting bump music choice there, Alondra. Why? I... I just wasn't expecting that. You, you've kind of jumped around a little bit today. No, I've been playing No Doubt like the whole time. Oh, the whole time? Oh, uh, I haven't been paying attention. Well, I was playing it because I knew you like yeah, Stefani. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Alondra and I, was that when, when, was that Houston? Yeah, that was when we were in Houston. Okay. Yeah, I, Alondra found out that I actually don't, that I think Gwen Stefani is annoying. So. That... I do. I think she's annoying. It's terrible take. You've really been playing No Doubt this entire time? I've played at least four No Doubt songs. Oh. I mean, the first one, yeah. I recognized the first one yeah. coming back from the first break. But, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, I just haven't been paying uh, paying that much attention then, I guess. That Are almost you? ended our, like, friendship. I, I'm sorry. She annoys me. I'm just me. not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not talking noise on the success that no. she's had or anything of that nature. What she is just so annoys annoying me. about I don't, She Stefani. just annoys me. I don't Why? know. I don't know. Exactly. I just, she, I find her annoying. I, I don't know why. I just do. I'm like, eh. Yeah, I don't, maybe I saw her on like, what was it? She was a judge on one on of those the shows. I mean, and I was just like, you know what? No, I'm not about it. Yeah, I don't know. I, so I, I, personality doesn't jive. I don't know. Sorry. Wow. I mean, I, it's again, uber successful musician. All those things, I find her annoying. Wow. So I'm I'm sorry about that. I'm glad our friendship could survive that I think Gwen Stefani, a person that neither of us have ever met, <laughs> is annoying. I mean, I just don't think you should talk bad about Gwen like that. Well, you know, uh, the deed is done. All right, let's do Tigers at the Price. Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, we'll start with an update from free agency. The Tennessee Titans have added yet another former LSU offensive lineman. This time, it is Sadiq Charles. Charles played his entire career uh, with the Washington Commanders up to this point. But according to Diane Rossini from The Athletic, he is now a member of the Tennessee Titans. It's a one-year contract. Uh, earned the starting job with the Commanders last year, but didn't miss six games with the calf injury. Of course, we kept you updated with that all throughout. Uh, Fourth-round pick out of LSU in 2020. Of course, uh, played tackle at LSU, played guard for Washington. Uh, not really known yet where he will fit in in Tennessee. Just uh, a depth piece. But what's cool about this, it does reunite him with uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, obviously his former teammate at LSU, and they were in the same draft class. And it is uh, the third member of the 2019 LSU offensive line uh, that has now been signed to a free agent deal here in the last two days. And he joins uh, Cush and uh, Delu yesterday. He got broke off by the Carolina Panthers. Major League Baseball spring training, Aaron Nola. Really, really solid day for Aaron Nola. Four and two-thirds, just the one earned run. Struck out five in that outing. Got a no decision, but uh, 
that normally happens, obviously, when he pitches for the Phillies. We we constantly point that out. But the Phillies did get the win today, 4-1 to one over the Detroit Tigers in spring training. Jaden Hill currently on the mound for the Colorado Rockies. Uh, two-thirds of an inning so far. Shutout ball for Jaden Hill. One hit and one strikeout. Flying under the radar this year in spring training. He has been awesome. So far, a 1.93 ERA for Jaden Hill in spring training with the Rockies. I mean, obviously, all of us here are going to look at that and think the giant what-if that it was uh, his career at LSU. But happy to see him looking finally healthy and doing big things uh, there in spring training. Hopefully, it leads to potential roster spot for him at some point this year with Colorado. And we're wrapping up. Nas Reed last night, Timberwolves over the Clippers. Nas didn't get the start in the absence of Carl Anthony Towns, but did contribute 22 minutes off the bench with six points, five boards, and three assists. That is Tigers in the pros, and that is just about going to wrap up our number two here of a Wednesday edition of AFR. We're keeping you updated uh, as things go from Alec Box Stadium, of course, LSU taking on North Dakota State, closing out that two-game midweek season before heading off to Starkville to start SEC play. Sports Center coming up next, national headlines, and then uh, breakout players for LSU here in 2024. We'll talk about them next. AFR. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. Breaking NFL news, receiver Calvin Ridley leaving Jacksonville for Tennessee. He's signing with the Titans. Four years, $92 million, $50 million guaranteed, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter. Chargers released receiver Mike Williams, freed up $20 million in cap space. Linebacker Khalil Mack agreed to a restructured deal. He'll remain with L.A. next season, reports Schefter. Yankees ace Garrett Cole has been shut down, scheduled to visit Dr. Neil Elitrosh in L.A. for further testing on his right elbow, expected to start the season on the injured list. So what does New York do in his absence? ESPN MLB insider Buster Olney. If they go the free agent route, Blake Snell is still out there. Jordan Montgomery is still out there. If they wanted to go the trade route, Dylan Cease is still out there. But the cost is incredibly prohibitive from their perspective, in part because any player they add, they will be taxed at a rate of 110%. Marquette star guard Tyler Kolick, one of the nation's premier point guards, expected to return from an oblique injury in time for the NCAA tournament. The Golden Eagles are a projected two seed. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. At Progressive, they're making things even easier. They'll help you bundle your home and car insurance together so you can save on both. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour number three of After Further Review here on a Wednesday presented by Pluckers. Musso in for Moscona. Alondra Villarreal and Paul O'Neill along for the ride as well here. Been a great show uh, and plenty, plenty more here left. We'll talk some LSU football in a moment to lead off this hour. Sean Fazan from Fox 8 down in New Orleans will be here uh, in the next segment with us to talk uh, everything that has happened with the Saints uh, here uh, You know, as the new league year is officially underway. They've gotten into cap compliance. They've signed Willie Gay. Michael Thomas is you know, officially about to be post uh, designated to post June one release uh, a whole bunch going on. They restructured Ryan Ramchick, uh, but in a different way. So a whole bunch to talk about with, uh, with Sean Fazan here uh, momentarily. LSU is in the top of the third, two outs runners at the corners leading three to nothing. Christian little in a little bit of a jam, but um, trying to work his way out of that right now. All right. LSU football here. Um, so ESPN, they did a staff report where they took their top 25, like they're way too early, top 25, and went down each team and listed a breakout player for said team. LSU, of course, number 12 right now on the way too early top 25 for uh, for ESPN. And Mark Schlebaugh, for what it's worth, is, is the staff member who was tasked with naming or picking his uh, breakout player for LSU in, in 2024. And Schleyball tabs Caleb Jackson, running back Caleb Jackson. It's a great pick. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. I think everybody's excited to see more from Caleb Jackson because the little bit of taste that we got from him last year was, whoa, you know, wow. Everybody wanted to see more of him actually in the ball, in the ball game as it, as it progressed. Um, Schleyball does mention, you know, in in his write up, uh, the already viral moment that Caleb Jackson had when he disgraced that young man and his family from Mississippi State when he just shoved him into the turf, uh, and you know the powerful running style, how it's been compared to to Leonard Fournette, uh, how Jesse Palmer compared uh, Jackson to, to Saquon Barkley, 165 yards and four touchdowns as as a freshman. It was a great year, and I think we all expect big things from Caleb Jackson moving forward and works. I mean, people were started to be excited to see him after he broke that long uh, touchdown in one of the spring scrimmages, or maybe it was a fall scrimmage, fall or spring scrimmage. I can't remember which one. They were in Tiger Stadium. I think it was fall. And it was a screen pass or a screen or a swing, one of the two. And I mean, he took like 85 yards 
And everybody immediately was just like, Caleb Jackson, like, give us more Caleb Jackson, give us more Caleb Jackson. So absolutely a breakout candidate. And LSU is going to have to have that, uh, that being a, a, you know, a stable running game because you lose all the yards from, from Jaden Daniels. And Brian Kelly's talked about that already here early in spring practice about how they go about doing that, whether it, you know, with the stable running backs that they're going to have to have, you're really thin there right now. But Caden Durham's obviously going to come in out of the 2024 signing class. So he'll be a part of your backfield. You have Josh Williams. Like you're going to be able to build those numbers back up. And Brian Kelly, when talking about the running game, shifted it more towards the offensive line and how veteran that group is and how they will be able to help open up holes and, and really, you know, uh, create a dynamic running game for LSU. So while I like to pick from Schleyball being Caleb Jackson, I decided that I would go ahead and give you a breakout player from my point of view, one on offense and one on defense. Excuse me, because obviously we know what LSU needs to do on defense. And as we talked about earlier, I mean, the offense is all the rage right now. They're just going to keep on rolling. So this is what I came up with um, in, in that regard. Let's start offensively for LSU, the breakout player. Like I said, I love the pick of Caleb Jackson there from Mark Schleyball, but I think the easiest place to see someone able to break out here is in the receiving core. Because with Garrett Nussmeyer at quarterback, LSU's going to sling it, y'all. Like, we know that, right? They're going to sling it. Excuse me. So that's where I went. I was like, okay, who there? Kyron Lacey stands out, right? Kyron Lacey's kind of got that, that Terrace Marshall thing going on for him this year where he was, you know, a great third uh, option for you behind Thomas and neighbors like Marshall was behind Chase and Jefferson. You really started to see uh, the flashes for him. And now maybe he's, you know, he's going to be looked upon to be the guy this year, but I didn't go that route. For me, it was pretty easy. I went Xavion Thomas because I look at him and I see a guy already that, has uh, averaged 12.4 yards per touch in the SEC. I look at a guy who has been a All-American returner, and that absolutely factors into this. I know we played the audio a few weeks ago of Brian Kelly talking about uh, you know the value they place on part returner right now with its place in college football and whatnot. But, I mean, Xavion Thomas is looked upon to absolutely be a game changer and game breaker there. So that's another area he can impact this team in this in the game and potentially break out. And also in in uh that factors into you know the 12.4 yards per touch. But the the um the 503 yards that he had on 42 receptions last year at Mississippi State is probably the most impressive thing. And that is solely because Mississippi State looked like they did not have a clue what they wanted to do offensively last year under Zach Arnett. And that guy was still able to be productive enough to get over 500 yards and 40 grabs and a score in that offense. You put him in to an offense with a quarterback like guess with with a quarterback like Garrett Nussmeyer who just wants to sling it, and a guy calling plays in Joe Sloan who's going to let him do that. I love the breakout potential for a guy like Xavier Thomas and then add in the fact that he's going to be able to impact the game uh, in the return uh, in the return game as well. I think he's going to just be huge for LSU in 2024. On the defensive side of the ball, it was a little bit harder to find uh, out a guy that you're like, man, breakout, who's it going to be? Because you need help, you know, secondary, obviously, Linebacker, you have options. You're going to move Harold Perkins back inside. Defensive line, you really still need to bolster your numbers there. All of that. But when I really sat down and thought about it, one guy popped into my mind. And it's Braden Swenson. And I don't think we're talking about Braden Swenson enough so far in this offseason. So go back to last year. They're going to move Harold Perkins inside. You need somebody to rush the passer. Play that jack spot. B.J. Ojolari's off to the league. They brought in Ovi Gofu, and everybody thought it was going to be him. He was the guy tabbed to do that. 
and they missed on him. It didn't work out. But Braden Swenson really emerged in that role last year. When you look at all the problems LSU had defensively last year, and there were plenty, Braden Swenson was one of the bright spots. 35 tackles. Uh, six and a half tackles for a loss. Three sacks. And a team high nine quarterback hurries. Team high nine quarterback hurries. That's the thing. He wasn't always getting home. But he was always impacting the game off the edge. LSU's going to need somebody to be that edge rusher this year. And when you look at an aggressive style defense like Blake Baker plays, Braden Swenson could easily fit into that. To show you how disruptive he was in his one season at LSU and where that breakout potential really lies for him here in 2024 now in Blake Baker's system, go back and look at his three years at Oregon before he transferred to LSU. He appeared in 30 games. So in 30 games at Oregon over three years, 35 tackles. He had 35 tackles last year in 12 games at LSU. Five and a half tackles for loss at Oregon. He topped that number six and a half at LSU last year. Three sacks at Oregon, two at LSU, but still comparable. And then you have those nine quarterback hurries that led the team. Y'all, he equaled in that deep, in that awful defensive year that LSU had last year, he equaled or surpassed his highs that he accumulated in three seasons at Oregon. And now you're going to give him to Blake Baker? Yeah. I'm ready to watch Braden Swenson in 2024. I think he can have a massive impact for LSU's defense uh, come the fall. And I cannot wait to see it. So those are my potential breakout players for LSU in 2024. Give me Xavion Thomas on the offensive side of the ball. Give me Braden Swenson on the defensive side of the ball. And like I said, Play boss pick, Caleb Jackson. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of him too. And I think we're all ready to do that as well. All right, we're going to grab a break. Come back on the other side. Sean Fazan, Fox 8 in NOLA. He's going to join the show, talk everything that's happened here. The new league year is underway in the NFL, and the Saints are making moves. We have you covered with that next here on AFR. AFR. Love telling you about Rouse's. Rouse's is the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints and of course, with it being Lent, a lot of people are looking for seafood options on Fridays in Lent. I got great news for you. They just had a price drop on crawfish by full $2 a pound. So uh, th the crawfish aren't $2 a pound, but they dropped by $2 a pound. Uh, live crawfish over at Rouse's, $5.99 and boiled. seven. If you're getting more than 10 pounds, $7.29 a pound. If you're getting them uh, un a few fewer than 10 pounds, $7.49 a pound over at Rouse's. The official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints is Rouse's. You can go to rouse's.com, rouse's.com. You can follow them on all their social media. Remember, if it is the boiled crawfish, if it's catfish fillets, uh, if it's boiled shrimp, they have grab-and-go options at their hot and boiled kiosk at Rouse's. Just walk in, go to the left, you'll see the seafood department and the hot and boiled kiosks over at Rouse's. Rouse's.com, Rouse's. This feels like home. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Brack, your number one park system in the nation. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. 
They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking app. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Rolling along here on a Wednesday edition of AFR Musso in for Moscona. The new league year officially underway in the NFL, and it was a uh, busy few days in the uh, legal tampering period. Now, of course, you can get on get underway with all of your operations. And the Saints saw a lot of people walk out the door. The Saints also brought in uh, Willie Gay. We're going to recap it all right now with uh, Sean Fazan from Fox 8 down in NOLA on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox 8. Sean, we appreciate the time. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. Uh, let's start with the Willie Gay signing here, Sean. Uh, just, I mean, initial reaction to that move? Uh, low cost. Guy that's got some experience in big games. Two-time Super Bowl champ. Probably a sneakier position of need than people realize in terms of numbers and age at that position. Um, we'll have a chance to come in and get on the field. I don't know if he'll be a, a guaranteed starter, but I think he gets on the field. Uh, at, at some point, got great speed, sideline to sideline. The uh, only thing that really jumped out to me that, that I didn't necessarily like was last year in the playoffs, uh, his snap count really dipped once they got into the postseason and then picked back up until the Super Bowl game. Curious to find out about that. But uh, overall, when you look at you know um, the need, the age, what you paid, um, not not a bad signing. Um, I, now, I didn't expect at this point to have only one signing from another team mm -hmm. for the Saints, but nonetheless, it is what it is, and uh, they landed a decent guy in Willie Gay. So, I mean, you, you mentioned maybe not just like a guaranteed, you know, starter first day, so you wouldn't go as far as to say this is just, you know, all right, this is your replacement for Zach Bond, go get it? Well, yeah, I think you can play that, that Sam linebacker position um, when – uh, that that calls for it. So yeah, I certainly think he would get on the field in, in that scenario. But we also know that the Sam linebacker position is just it, it's yeah. just not uh, it's not on the field all that much. Now it was on the field uh, a little bit more in the Super Bowl because of the amount of personnel groupings that San Francisco used. But he didn't just play Sam linebacker; he played off the ball as well. So uh, I think he's a guy to give you some position flexibility. That position, he's got good experience and he's a young veteran. Um, so and I think he obviously he comes from a winning pedigree. So. He checked a lot of boxes, and one of the best boxes he checked was he's pretty low cost. So um, I think that's why they it felt like it was necessary to bring him in, and I think he'll get on the field. And like I said before, whether or not he's the starting Sam linebacker position or if he kind of floats around, 
I think it's to be to be determined. You also mentioned there that you're surprised that you know this is the only signing they've made. What what other positions maybe were you expecting? What other moves were you expecting potentially at this point for New Orleans already? Well, well first, of, yeah, I, well, I didn't expect them to be to make any huge splash this year. Yeah. A, they didn't have any, and didn't have a huge uh, class of free agents in their own building. Uh, you know, right now the only one they brought back is Prentice and Rashid Shahid, who was a restricted free agent, and Shahid was an exclusive rights free agent. They didn't have that that must-have guy to bring back that would break the bank like, you know, Marcus Williams or Trey Henderson a few years ago. I just didn't have that high caliber of free agent. Um, and I, I didn't think, I didn't expect them to just to make a huge signing, but it, it took them a while before they got their first sign. What was it yesterday, about 5 or 6 o'clock, the news came down, and he's still the only one. I still think they, they addressed the backup quarterback situation uh, by bringing the veteran. I think people are really overlooking the need at wide receiver. Um, they have three young guys that they like, but that's it. It's just three young guys. They don't have anyone, like not a single other wide receiver on their roster right now. So I think they addressed that via veteran free agency and the draft most likely. Um, and then, look, the, the two biggest needs obviously still remain on the offensive and defensive line, which we'll see how much they address that in the next coming days. They got their financial house in order a little bit with some, some, some maneuvering with the cap. Um, and then, Obviously, they have a visit plan with Chase Young that could certainly be a big splash of a name, if you will, maybe the biggest if they were able to land him, but they still have to go through quite a bit to get to him. But I still think those needs remain as well. Wide receiver, are we expecting them to make a run at Hunter Renfro? I mean, there's obviously the history there with Derek Carr, and there's already a little bit of history with the Saints trying to acquire him. Wouldn't be shocked. Obviously, his connection to Derek Carr, most of his career with Derek Carr, had his best years with Derek Carr. He's clearly a guy Carr trusts. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, uh, fills that role that he plays well. Felt like the last couple of years he was phased out in, with the Raiders, and then the year before that felt like he dealt with some injuries as well. Um, wouldn't be shocking, especially when you consider he's a guy that, you know, uh, if he can, he kind of moves the sticks underneath. I know he's a smaller guy, run after a tight player um, with that connection to, to Derek Carr. Wouldn't be shocked at all if that were, if you made that connection. Um, so, yeah, I, I would I would think so. He would be someone that they could, potentially look at but they also have other receivers that you know could be floating around there as well that could potentially you know fit what they want to do with Clint Kubiak uh the Ryan Ramchek deal today you we also already have mentioned you know them getting in cap compliance because it's what they do um it it's an interesting one because it doesn't appear to be like their normal restructure pattern that they do how is this one different than deals we've seen in the past yeah, this is essentially what they did with uh, Tyron and Demario, or similar. Basically, it's it, 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 it's kind of a pay cut. You take a pay cut to the you drop the base salary to the to the veteran minimum, but in exchange for that, you get a, a basically a signing bonus, get guaranteed money, and you also get very makeable incentives to get to be able to recoup some of that money that you would, had, I guess, technically lost. Uh, with the with the you know the the, the drop in, in base salary pay, um, and it's just the reality of where Ryan Ranchak's at in his career, and the reality of where he's at, you know, with his knee issue and post surgery. They sound optimistic, but obviously there is a realism about what what could happen with him at that position at his age, and it certainly sounds like and looks like Ramchak, uh is very um, is very he understands that reality, and he wouldn't have agreed to this deal, this adjustment had it not been the case and but that's three guys now they've, they've kind of got to you know kind of finagle with you know essentially taking a little bit less money up front in exchange for uh some different sort of guarantees and obviously it helped the saints cap scenario and here they are i guess about 14 million under the cap which i mean they could do a lot with that just in terms of the way they were able to kind of maneuver with the bookkeeping so um it was a it was not unexpected it was going to have some kind of adjusted adjustment to the contract of Ryan Ramchek. This is uh, a little bit of a unique way of doing it. And I, I, you know, I, I think, you know, kudos to the Saints for getting this done and Ramchek for agreeing to it because um, this, w- this would have been tricky if they would have just said, well, if he would have just said, nah, just restructure me like you always would have to, where you, you know, convert a portion of the base salary to signing bonus and spread out over the life of the contract. This gives them a little more, bit more relief both up front and a little bit more on the back end as well. Yeah, I mean, he was definitely one of the more interesting ones to watch. And it's, I mean, because of the health and you, you alluded to it there. I mean, yes, they sound optimistic, but I mean, I'm, look, I'm not a doctor. It just doesn't really feel like the cartilage in your knee is ever going to stop, you know, deteriorating. So with that in mind, 
for you, how big of a need, where does it rank offensive tackle for you going into the draft or veteran free agency or whichever way they want to go? Where does that rank on your list for need for the Saints? One. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's the one for me. Um, and, you know, if, if we're being real, you know, James Hurst is still under contract. And, um, you know, I guess you can pencil him in at one of the spots, but he's 33 years of age. And, um, you know, with a new system and a new sort of, I guess, quote unquote, prototype of what you want at offensive line with this system, um, I, there could be a chance that perhaps left tackle and left guard could be up for grabs in terms of uh, a need there, not just as a starter, but maybe for depth as well. There's still a huge unknown when it comes to Trevor Penning. Uh, I do think there's a chance uh, they, they give it a try at guard with him. Uh, I guess we'll find out when we get closer and closer into the offseason. But I, I think given the way they want this offense to run and this new offense's investment in this new offense coaching staff, it means nothing, absolutely nothing, if they don't have confidence up front. And right now, uh, there's still a huge hole on that left side of the line of scrimmage. So, Andrews Pete also uh, not resigning uh here yet what what do you think happens there that's also been one of the more in you know interesting ones with the saints yeah i know he had he had a good year last year finished out the year really stepped in and kind of saved the saints when they needed it at that obviously left tackle position um he's a guy he's over 30 years old um has had some issues with injuries in the past although last year he did not it was one of his arguably one of his best years um clearly they are okay with letting him test the market and if somehow the price ends up dropping or if uh, somehow it, it, it becomes worth it financially to bring him back, I don't think the door would be closed on that. But I, I also think by letting him become a free agent, um, they clear, they feel like they can possibly go in another direction uh, you know, at that position. He's a guy who's been around for a while. He's had an interesting tenure here that since 2015. Um, but it looks like, and look, he's already on their books with that dead money yeah. from all those past restructures. But nonetheless, He's a free agent, and um, I would say the fact they let him get to the open market kind of shows you uh, they feel like perhaps they could go in another direction. Sean Fazan, Fox 8, down in NOLA on, t- on Twitter, at Sean Fazan, Fox 8. Uh, Sean, one more for you here on the way out. Uh, the news that we all were expecting here, especially after last week, Michael Thomas is going to be designated uh, post-June 1. Just, I mean, the way that all ended, I mean, it, it – I don't think it's what anybody expected. Uh, what's kind of your reaction to the last few weeks with, with how that, really the last few months, I guess, with how it ended with Mike Thomas in New Orleans? Well, look, I've covered him his entire time here. Um, the player, when he got here in 2016, to the player he became, it, it just, it, um, it's kind of a sad scenario because he was, he was on, his, on a Hall of Fame trajectory from his first four years of his career. Injuries happened, and then it's like, honestly, I, you saw the tweets. You saw him go off. It's not the first time. It's like incident number 50. That, that's just not the work of a, frankly, a stable human being. I mean, that, that's a guy that's, that's basically had some issues. And obviously, he's, um, it, it's, been a, it's been a frustrating four, last four years, I'm sure, with not just uh, football-wise, but, you know, the constant dealing with the injuries. And he's, he's one he seems to have, have an issue when it comes to social media. And you notice, you know, he's, he's done a lot of things for the Saints, and he was the yeah. best receiver in the NFL when he was at his peak. And there was goodbye by the Saints organization. There was no, you know, thank you for everything, Mike. It was just sort of a, you know, transaction post June first designation for Michael Thomas. I think that relationship had run its course. It had been kind of labeled a separation for a while, and it's finally a divorce now. And honestly, it, it's best for both sides to just move on from the Michael Thomas situation. He had a great four years, but it feels like it's been forever since he's uh, been a very good football player or even good football player. It feels like all we ever talk about is the social media presence or the injury report. And after, you know, it's run its course and it's time to say goodbye to Michael Thomas. Sean Fazan, Fox 8 down in NOLA. Your time very much appreciated. Thank you for helping us get caught up on a, a very busy couple of days uh, for the New Orleans Saints. It's always an interesting offseason surrounding the black and gold, Sean. We appreciate the time as always. Indeed it is, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, y'all get over there. Of course, give Sean a follow at Sean Fazan, Fox 8 on Twitter. Uh, we're going to grab a break, come back on the other side, wrapping up here just about a uh, Wednesday edition of AFR. Glad you've all been along with us for the ride. It's been a very busy show. LSU's got a 3 to nothing lead out of the box there in the bottom of the fourth. Jake Brown at the plate. We'll get you an update on uh, where they stand in that game and get you a preview on LSU and Mississippi State in hoops at the SEC tournament tomorrow when we return on a hump day edition of AFR presented by Pluckers. AFR.
teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Brought to you by Evermore, all-natural, great-tasting water. When you uncap a bottle of Evermore, that's the first time the product touches air. It's incredible. It's a natural well. It's natural artesian water. It's a well. It's on, on the North Shore. I went to their bottling facility. When you pull up on the left, you'll see the well is right there. They drill deep into the earth. They pipe it out right into their filters and their filtration system. Nothing is added. Nothing is extracted. It is completely pure from the earth water. So if you want a healthier option, if you want a healthier lifestyle, something healthier for your children. Maybe you're an athlete that wants a superior form of hydration, Evamore, E-V-A-M-O-R. If you notice, go to their website, you'll see Dak Prescott is one of their, their chief spokespeople. I mean, starting NFL quarterback is vouching for it. Check it out at great local retailers or order on their website at evamor.com, evamore.com, evamore.com. Been a sleepy game out at Alec Box Stadium, Skip Burton Field, so far between LSU and North Dakota State. Tigers lead it three to nothing after four innings, but uh, all three of those runs came in the first. All three of those runs came without the benefit of a hit. 
uh, for LSU, which, again, just get the runs. Who cares how you get them? Just get the runs. Uh, but since then, uh, a whole lot of nothing uh, really out there. But the great news is LSU still, you know, doing great on the mound, dominating. Uh, but the fourth inning just ended with a pickoff at first base of Jake Brown. He walked to lead off the inning. Uh, you had a fly out from Bingham, a pop up from White, and then Brown was picked off uh, at first base. Man. Um, so just, you know, not. <laughs> They're not even on. They're not on on par yet with the offensive performance that they had last night. So you're still just kind of searching for the consistency um, with this LSU team. But I mean, the good news is they've been, you know, steady Eddie uh, on the mound so far this season. Really, more than steady Eddie, they've been they've been dominant. Uh, Currently in there right now is, is uh, Nick Bronzini after a great two and a third from Christian Little. I mean, that was awesome. It was efficient. He struck out four, 39 pitches, y'all. This is something I've talked about a lot on Moose with the Box. Uh, get subscribed if you haven't already. YouTube and podcast, favorite podcast app. Um, we zeroed in on Christian Little in the offseason there because... It was very obvious what happened to him last year. He walked too many people. It was his career high in walks, going back to his time at Vanderbilt. And there was a sample size easily for you to see, okay, he can be successful in college baseball. It was his sophomore year at Vanderbilt. He walked 17 in a comparable inning amount to what he threw last year at LSU. And in his sophomore year with those 17 walks, he had an ERA of, of 3-7. You'll take that. And he'll be a very valued member of your bullpen if he can give you that. And so far, the walk number has been awesome from uh, from Christian Little uh, th- this season. Uh, just one today. So, I mean, you know, that's uh, that's huge. You look at where, where he was coming into today. It was at three. So, you're looking at four walks. From little so far on the year in seven and a third innings, and he's got an ERA of 3.68. Keep that pace up, and he's going to be a big weapon for you. And that's that's big for a lot of reasons. One of them is you're very left-handed heavy on this team. The more righties you can get to emerge, the better. I don't necessarily think that's a must. Like, I don't think LSU has to have right-handed pitching options to you know, be successful, clearly they're doing great on the mound. But the more different looks you can give a team, the better. So I'm all for what we've seen from Christian Little. Now, I will throw this caveat out there with it as well. We saw this from him last year. He was awesome in the pre-conference slate. When he got into the SEC is where some of those troubles really started to creep up. So he's somebody I will have a keen eye on as they start uh, SEC play here this weekend, but so far, uh, so far, so good for Christian Little on the bump. So LSU, they're up three to nothing over Northwestern State. Again, Nick Bronzini in the game now on the mound. They're in the top of the fifth over there in a sleepy game, but um, they are, they're moving along. They're moving along kind of right on pace, maybe a little behind, but right on pace uh, so far at the box. Be on the lookout for uh, the recap uh, on Musso at the box. Uh, again, available YouTube, your favorite podcast app. Get subscribed, uh, smash the like button, share all those great things. It's uh, very, very much appreciated. We can get your preview here of uh, LSU and Mississippi State, but first, a word about pure restoration. Mold Zero, now pure restoration. Same patented non toxic dry fog treatment. If you got mold, think you might have mold. Not sure if you have mold. Mold can be in your walls. You don't even know about it. Pure restoration comes in. You don't have to worry about moving furniture, pulling up carpet, any of that sort of stuff. They come in, they'll spray their patented non-toxic dry fog, your home, office building, commercial building, whatever it may be. They're going to be more efficient than traditional remediation. It's going to cost you less as well. I love telling this story. There was uh, an elderly woman who's a homeowner, had black mold on her ceiling, and she couldn't get a quote from anywhere that was less than $28,000. This was an elderly widow. Mold Zero came in, got rid of the mold for less than five grand. Mold Zero is now pure restoration. Same company, same great patented non-toxic dry fog. They're general contractors, so they can do demolition build back when you need it. 
They can take care of odor, sanitization. It's Pure Restoration. Pure-Restoration.com. Pure-Restoration.com. The SEC tournament is going to get underway tonight at 6 p.m. when Arkansas faces the Vanderbilt Commodores. The Hogs are a six and a half point choice in that game. LSU stay in Nashville, but they hope is they stay in Nashville. Gets underway tomorrow at noon. So a uh, noon central tip for LSU against Mississippi State. Let's take a little bit of a look at that ball game right here. Um, we previewed it yesterday with Glenn West uh, here on the show. So just a little bit more of a preview for you uh, on the way out here. It's a big spot for both teams. Mississippi State seems to be right on the bubble of the NCAA tournament. This would go a long way for them if they could string together a couple wins in the SEC tournament, but especially just getting at least one and then take your chances against uh, Tennessee and, and see what you can do there. That would definitely do it for them. And then for LSU. So you look where LSU is trying to get into the NIT. It's going to depend on on what happens with uh, you know, Ole Miss, if Ole Miss can get in, if Ole Miss or, and or Texas A&M gets into that NCAA tournament, then LSU is going to have uh, you know, automatic bid into the NIT with one of those at large bids, but and, and not have to worry about an at large bid. But if if both those teams get left out, then LSU is at the mercy of an at large. So you can strengthen your case with for that with a win over a bubble team in Mississippi State for the NCAA tournament. So a lot on the line here for both teams in this game. Matt McMahon, when he met with the media yesterday, talked about the opportunity against Mississippi State in the SEC tournament. You know, we're playing a really, really good Mississippi State team on Thursday. Hubbard's playing as well as any guard in the country, averaging 29 a game over the last five, uh, making almost six threes a game over the last five games. Tolo Smith has been fantastic in their front court. And then defensively, very physical, uh, really bothered us in the first matchup. Cameron Matthews, who was on the all-defensive team yesterday, uh, with his ability to guard multiple positions and his physicality. So uh, we're excited about the opportunity. They're going to have to do a much better job on Hubbard and, and Tolu Smith. Those guys killed them in the last matchup. LSU lost that one 87 to 67. You lost by 20. Hubbard dropped 32 on you, and, and Smith had about 20 off the bench uh, in that game. So that is absolutely the matchups that you're going to have to watch for LSU. What I will tell you when I look at this spot for LSU, that's why I like it. The spot is so much better for them this time around against Mississippi State than it was in the regular season. Do y'all remember when that game was played? I mean, that was the game. Not only after the upset of Kentucky, you rush the court, court storm angle. Otter gives it out all the time here in Otter Locks. So you're victimized by that. It was a very emotional game. Comeback, buzzer beater, you know, right there at the end, you win. But that was on the heels of the emotional comeback win against South Carolina on the road. You had your back-to-back -to -back top 20 wins right there. Both come back, both highly emotional, and then you face Mississippi State at home. And you were fatigued. It's just the natural letdown spot. You lose Tyrell Ward late in the first half in that game, and he had really been kind of the heartbeat of your team to that point, like through that run, through those upsets of South Carolina and Kentucky. He was such a large part of that. You lose him. He doesn't come back in the game. The spot was such a disadvantage for LSU the first time they played Mississippi State. It's not now. They're 5-2 and two down the stretch. They have some momentum. They're going to have Tyrell Ward. They're going to be rested. Trey Hannibal's really playing well at the point for LSU. He's facilitating. He's scoring. He's doing everything that you need him to do. They should be plenty confident. And oh, by the way, you're going up against a team that beat you by 20 in your building. You should want some revenge here. So I like the spot an awful lot. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is going to be easy for LSU by any stretch of the imagination. It's not because they, like I said, they got to stop Hubbard. They got to stop Tolu Smith and those guys are probably going to get theirs. But I just think LSU is better equipped to answer a little bit more in this game. You saw in the first one, a flurry from LSU early. There was something like seven lead changes or something in the first 15 minutes. Like they were there punching. 
And then the fatigue settles in. Then you lose Tyrell Ward, and it just snowballs on you. They're in a much better spot this time around. So LSU should go out there and give it their all, and they have a great chance to get the win. I think that they will get the win in a close, tight, contested ballgame. You look at Mississippi State. They're not playing bad. They had a tough schedule down the stretch, but they're coming in on a, a three or four game losing streak right now. Three game losing streak, I do believe. So they have not won since they beat LSU. That was their last win. Now, could that give them confidence? Sure, absolutely. But LSU, you should have more of the momentum. You can play with this team, and now you're rested, healthy, healthy as you can be, and, and ready to go. So I look forward to that one noon. We'll have a recap for you here tomorrow. Uh, on AFR of that. If LSU wins, they play uh, the top seed and SEC champion, uh, Tennessee Volunteers, which would absolutely be an uphill climb once again. But you beat Mississippi State, you really feel good about having solidified yourself as at least an at-large bid into the NIT. And depending on what happens in front of you in the net with the NCAA tournament, you might end up in one of those automatic bid spots. All right, we're going to grab a break, come back on the other side. We will wrap up a Wednesday edition of AFR with Otterlocks. Don't you move. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. If you've been injured and it's not your fault, do what injured people in Louisiana have done for more than 30 years. Call Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. 888-8888. It's all eights. 888-8888. I don't even need to give you the area code because no matter where you are in the state, it doesn't matter. Just dial 888-8888 for Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. Gordon does an awesome job, man. Uh, great. He's a great person. He's great. They've been so invested in our communities with all the charitable and service work that they do, the give back into the communities that they represent no matter what time of year. If it's the bike giveaway for kids around Christmas time, if it's the laptop giveaway around back to school time, if it's the charitable work they do during October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they're always involved in the community. We tell you all the time, of course, about the G team and what Gordon's done with NIL and the opportunities that he's afforded student athletes. Just a great, great community partner. If you've been injured, you need representation, go to getgordon.com. That's getgordon.com. Get Gordon and get it done. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. It was a humid day Barefoot children play Looking for its summer shade Like Cyrus Dumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Roger about Michelle weighing and measurement. 
Michelle.com, Michelle.com with 30 offices across 11 different states. If you weigh or measure something, Michelle sells, services, rents the products used to weigh and measure. No matter where you are, you can ship your precision measurement devices to Michelle and they'll calibrate them for you, send them back, or they'll just come to your office, pick them up, and bring them back. They can also do on site calibration. If you have equipment that can't leave or you don't want it to leave, they can come do on site calibrations as well with their mobile calibration labs. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement online at Michelle.com. Louisiana born, Louisiana owned and operated for 76 years. They've continued to grow, expand their footprint while maintaining that local ownership, local feel, handshake deals, face to face sales. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. They're also hiring. Check out the careers tab at Michelle.com. Again, online at Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Wrap it up. Hour number three. Wrap it up. Wednesday show here on uh, AFR. We're going to wrap it up like we do every day. Otter Locks. Otter Locks, presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. Conference, conference tournaments raging on in college basketball. We welcome on our guy, the Ott Father. Otter, how are you? Oh, busy, 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 Musso over here at the Queen Casino. It's a drafting sports book. It's just hunkering down, man. Uh, seeing this, these games are coming down to the wire. I mean, they stay playing 16 and a half, yep. going 14. With seven minutes to go, they had as much of a 23-point lead. But here we go. Um, we're going to go with uh, Cincinnati, minus two and a half. Um, okay. so two best players for Kansas City now. Bill, Bill Self said that on his uh, on his radio show this week. So they are out. He's never played this early, and I think it's going to be an early exit. Wake up call. Totally slept off for the, the first 30 minutes of the game against West Virginia. Take Cincinnati. Missouri 0 18 in the league and only catches two and a half. Stinky enough for me. Give me a Missouri plus two and a half, five to three. And our best bet tonight goes off at six. Texas Longhorns minus five against Kansas State. Uh, Otter, for the Cincinnati game, I'm looking at three. Is that, is that, you still like yeah, it there? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All mm-hmm. right. And then you said the last one was Texas? Yes. All right. Uh, so Otter's giving you Cincinnati, Missouri, and Texas here tonight in conference tournament action. He's over there at the Queen. Uh, that's all we got tonight, Otter? Yes, sir. All uh, right. More picture in the Daily Show tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow and Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the DraftKings Sportsbook at the Queen. All right, Otter. We appreciate it. Y'all tune in to live right, at lunch. Thanks, man. Let Otter get back to it there. Our, our guy's working away, just trying to give you, trying to give you the best plays. Uh, that we can. So Cincinnati uh, minus the points against Kansas. Uh, Missouri plus the two and a half buy it to three against Georgia. And then Texas uh, going up against, uh, was it the Jayhawks? Uh, I believe. No, it's Kansas State. Texas minus, uh, minus the six there. LSU back on the board at the box. It's now four to nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning. Brady Neal walks to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. And then uh, Jared Jones comes up behind him, doubles to left center, scoring Neal. Uh, Napolt goes in as a pinch runner now for Jones. And Travinsky uh, just singled to right center. So you have runners at first and third down. Nobody out. LSU threatening to blow the game open here against North Dakota State uh, late in in the, uh, or not late, but, Early in the fifth inning, I guess. Uh, I guess I should say that's just about going to wrap us up here uh, on a Wednesday edition of AFR. Musso filling in for Scone. The rest of the week, uh, I'll be here for Scone. Scone's up at a uh, media summit in New York, uh, the Barrett Sports Media Summit. He's even speaking uh, as well at it. So he's out. Uh, was out yesterday, today, Tuesday. Uh, excuse me, Thursday and Friday. He will be back in the chair on Monday. So. Glad to have all of you that I have uh, here with us uh, so far this week and hope that you'll continue to hang around with us the rest of the week. We have a, a great show already in the works tomorrow. I mean, LSU, they are going to be uh, back on the practice field in spring, so we'll get you a full report uh, from the Ponderosa, see what happened with LSU as they've had a, a long layoff here over there on spring break, but back to work for the Tigers as they prepare for the 2024 season. So we'll have an update for you there. We'll obviously have a recap of uh, how the North 
Dakota State game finishes here with LSU. We'll have a recap from the SEC basketball tournament. Pell's recap there is going to be plenty, plenty to get to tomorrow on AFR. So hopefully you will join me then. Thank you to Christian Clark. Thank you to Sean Fazan for hopping on with us today. Thank you to Alondra. Thank you to Paul. And thank you to all of you for listening. This has been Wednesday edition of AFR presented by Pluckers. Join us tomorrow for more. AFR. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best.